uh, what's going to take place in the fall. And so there's a lot of work that's going to happen between now and then. Uh, of course, we've got uh, spring football, of course, wrapping up here today. And a lot of these guys that are going to either be on campus or they're going to be going back home or elsewhere are going to continue to work on developing themselves. And so uh, the work does not end here with spring practice ending. The work just continues for many of these players who want to be in the best shape possible to hit the ground running in the fall. Let's take a look at the scoring format here for today's game. Obviously, a modified scoring uh, format that we've used here in years past for this Crimson and Gold spring game. We'll play four 12-minute quarters. The clock will run, but we'll stop in the last two minutes of each half. Touchdown, uh, traditional six points. Field goal, three points. Two-point conversion, two points. And the extra point, one point for the offense. No changes there. The offense will get an extra point, though, for every first down and an extra point for a 10-plus yard play. Defensively, a chance to score some points on a touchdown, 10 points for the defense, six points for a takeaway, a three and out will be five points. And if the defense forces a punt, it'll be three points here in this uh, unique scoring format, uh, which uh, will give some guys an opportunity uh, here to put some points up on both sides of the football. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, uh, I love the incentives there, of course, for the defense and some really great incentives. If you can get off the field quickly, you're going to have an opportunity to stack up some points here. And so great opportunities here for the team. Uh, on both sides of the football, really to be able to shine in a lot of different ways, ways that really are important to the coaching staff and as they continue their evaluations. And, of course, they're going to want to look at this film. And, and I think some of those incentives there for some of those plays, especially defensively uh, in terms of getting off the field quickly, three and out, you mentioned uh, forcing a punt, uh, getting turnovers, takeaways are always huge for a defense. So those are going to be certainly things that we're going to be looking at. The Bulldogs, of course, a number of special events taking place uh, in conjunction with this game today. And that's one thing Coach Anise has done well, really try to get some other programs, other teams involved, and a chance to honor some other uh, individuals and teams that we'll see uh, here this afternoon. Yeah, that's one of the great things about uh, Ferris Athletics, Rob, is that, you know, we've seen the teams really support each other pretty much across the board. And, and you know, we've seen, you know, the football guys come out, for example, for, you know, the basketball teams, and, and we've seen uh, vice versa. Uh, and not just with uh, football and basketball, of course, but so many of our other sports uh, that have really come out to support and, again, vice versa. And so uh, we're going to see that tradition continue here today as uh, Ferris Athletics continues to be one big family. Of course, uh, we'll start that off uh, here uh, shortly in about 10 minutes uh, where we will honor the Ferris State women's soccer team, which reached the NCAA Division II Final Four this past fall. Coming up at the end of the first quarter, it'll be Ferris State Volleyball on the stage as the Bulldogs present their GLIAC championship rings uh, here at the end of the first quarter of action. Halftime will have a number of special uh, games and activities involving the Ferris State men's and women's basketball teams, Bulldog Volleyball and Bulldog Soccer, which will take part in some competitions coming up here at halftime. And then at the end of the third quarter, we will honor and welcome back all former Bulldog football players uh, here at Top Taggart Field today, along with a special presentation from the Woodbridge Ferris family to head coach Tony Anise and the Bulldogs. Uh, should be a, a great evening of football, and obviously uh, a couple uh, key individuals that uh, we'll talk more about here Honorary coaches for tonight's game. A couple former NFL uh, alums on the Ferris State side. Austin Edwards will help coach one team. And uh, the Harlan Hill legend himself, Jason Vanderlaan, uh, will be coaching the other team here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, a couple of great ones right there. Two great ambassadors for Bulldog football and uh, two of our favorites. And two celebrated uh, student athletes, two celebrated former student athletes who have uh, been able to rise to the highest levels of professional football, and yet they remain as connected as ever. They are really passionate about Bulldog football. They were a part of that tradition. They helped build that tradition and helped strengthen that tradition. We also have a couple honorary captains as well that uh, we'll talk more about. Two guys that just wrapped up their Ferris State careers and two of the best to ever wear the Bulldog uniform as well. Slot receiver uh, slash running back Marcus Taylor, who was a key member of that national championship team last fall. And on the defensive side, Caleb Murphy, uh, who I just saw get interviewed uh, down on the track and, of course, uh, awaiting the NFL draft this coming week. Uh, he'll be presented uh, officially tomorrow with the Gene Upshaw Award as well as the Division II Lineman of the Year. Uh, great to have Murph on hand here today, along with uh, some of those other Bulldog seniors uh, here for this spring game. Yeah, it's great to see Murph down there. He's got that good energy down there, celebrating right there. Good wave right there for our guy here getting ready to do some big things so always excited to have uh, not only Caleb Rob but just so many of our Bulldog alumni that come back and, and still have so much love for this program. 
The Bulldogs uh, here wrapping up spring football today. And, of course, uh, we get ready uh, for some special events coming up, uh, the ring ceremony tomorrow where uh, these guys will be presented officially their national championship rings. Uh, we had this event last year, and we'll have it again tomorrow, and uh, certainly a celebration and uh, one more opportunity to really celebrate uh, those back-to-back -back national championships. Yeah, in some ways it seems like that final culmination there, kind of have uh, the banquet and, and the opportunity to get those rings and, and really celebrate it. And uh, kind of like you said, that like we were just talking about that last big celebration of uh, the national championship. And uh, those guys get that hardware, and that's something they're going to be proud of. That's going to be something that those guys are going to really cherish for the rest of their lives. Just going to be a great little piece of hardware that uh, is just going to mean so much of the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to get it. Of course, uh, Bulldog football coming up on June 24th will be the annual golf outing at Clear Lake Golf Club and organized and ran by uh, one of the most loyal Bulldog alums there is, uh, chaired by Bill Shibley. And we'll have more information coming out on that golf outing uh, here in the days ahead at FerrisStateBulldogs.com. And then obviously the Bulldogs will kick off uh, fall camp coming up here in early August and then look forward to the 2023 season. And, of course, uh, opening uh, right here at Top Tiger Field August 31st under the lights against Mercyhurst. Well, it's always a great uh, game, a great tradition to be able to open up on a Thursday night and just a great uh, amount of things that are just going to be taking place here is, uh, you know, great celebrations are going to be taking place on campus. We're going to be kicking off the academic year and uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully the weather will be great and an opportunity to just get the family back together again under the lights and hopefully have a huge crowd and uh, pack this place and really be able to hopefully uh, kick the season off right with a big win uh, on opening night. So looking forward to it. It's just, again, it's always a great tradition, that opening night game. Of course, as we look at the 2023 schedule, a challenging schedule again here for the Bulldogs. Open up at home against Mercyhurst and then back-to-back -back road games. And I'm not sure you could find two tougher road games uh, <laughs> yeah. anywhere uh, here in Division II football. The Bulldogs will take on Ashland, a tough regional matchup on the road in Ohio on September 9th and September 16th, making the long trek out to face Montana, a uh, member of the FCS, uh, which has been perennially uh, one of the top 25 programs in the country. Yeah, you talk about uh, two tough road games right there. Uh, we've been down at Ashland, and that's always a, a really quality opponent. A very good program traditionally. And then, wow, going out to Montana, uh, you know that's going to be a tough one. Uh, that's a really strong program and uh, it's going to be a big test for the Bulldogs. And so uh, you're right, the Bulldogs are going to have to really be ready to go. And that makes the spring practice season so much more important. That's going to make the summer workouts that these guys are going to continue that much more important. And then they're going to want to have a great fall training camp to be ready because it's tough right off the bat. Homecoming set for September 30th against Northern Michigan. The Bulldogs will host Saginaw Valley State on October 7th. They'll take on Grand Valley State in the Anchor Bone Classic at Lubber Stadium on October 14th, then up to Michigan Tech before they return home to face American International on October 28th uh, at Davenport November 4th in at home against Wayne State for Senior Day on November the 11th as the Bulldogs look to make uh, another run here in Division II football. Of course, uh, Great nucleus coming back and uh, should be a consensus uh, top five team in the country going into next fall. Yeah, Bulldogs certainly going to feel pretty good about what they have. And, you know, preseason rankings are certainly very important for fans and, and for us in, in the media uh, to really be able to follow it. But at the end of the day, uh, you're going to have to earn your way back uh, to the goals that you're going to set for yourself. And uh, not only Ferris, but so many other teams that are going to start the season 0-0 zero and zero, looking to do great things. And so, um, you know, it's going to be fun to see where those preseason rankings are, but certainly the Bulldogs feel like, hey, we've got a lot of talent coming back. We've got a tradition, and that tradition is based on a foundation of hard work and dedication. We'll take a two-minute break. Back with more of the Johnson Automotive pregame show after this two-minute timeout right here on Sunny 97.3. The year is the future. Machines have taken the forefront. But what happens when they...
in the game to be able to get back out here for a spring game, the culmination of the spring season for the Bulldogs. So opportunity for them to get some work in as well. Ferris State uh, football uh, here at the Crimson and Gold Spring Game atop Taggart Field. We'll have all the action for you. Video coverage courtesy of Ferris State Television here on YouTube. And, of course, uh, the Bulldogs wrap it up uh, what has been a successful uh, spring here in terms of getting some action in, getting some preparation, and most importantly, uh, really getting some work in for a lot of these younger guys, including an outstanding freshman class that redshirted this past fall for the Bulldogs. Yeah, the Bulldogs have been able to put together some great recruiting classes, and, and that's uh, despite the, these deep runs in the playoffs, the Bulldogs have still had an opportunity to build some great recruiting classes. We've got Brody Kaiser down on the field. We'll go to him here shortly with the head coach of the Bulldogs, Tony Anise, to get his thoughts here on the Crimson and Gold spring game as the Bulldogs wrap up spring football. Uh, first, uh, we're going to have our honorary uh, coaches coming out here for the coin flip along with the honorary captains. I uh, see Jason Vanderlaan, uh, one of our honorary coaches, along with Austin Edwards making their way out to center field. Looks like Austin's uh, manning the white team. Jason with the red team here on the home sideline. Uh, Going to be joined by Caleb Murphy, Marcus Taylor, as uh, the Bulldogs uh, celebrate back-to-back uh, -back national championships and look forward to getting this uh, spring game uh, here kicked off today. Well, that's a lot of talent out there at uh, midfield. There's some greatness in uh, Ferris Athletics and uh, some guys that have really put their mark on this program to help this program get to where it is right now. Of course, the Bulldogs, three consecutive winners of the Gene Upshaw Division II Lineman of the Year Award. Austin being the first of those, first one in Ferris State history to win the Gene Upshaw Award. Dylan Pasquale followed a year ago, and Caleb Murphy, of course, uh, the recipient this year. Uh, meanwhile, Jason Vanderlaan, a two-time Harlan Hill Trophy winner and a guy that's uh, – been voted into the Ferris State Athletics Hall of Fame, going to be officially inducted into the Bulldog Athletics Hall of Fame this coming fall. Yeah, it's going to be a great honor for Jason and uh, uh, among the many great honors that he has had here as the captains face off here. And uh, we're getting pretty close to kickoff time here as uh, a lot of greatness shaking hands there, a lot of Bulldog alumni love right there at midfield. Looks like the white team, I believe, is going to get the ball first to start this contest here as uh, – the captains and the coaches, the honorary coaches, will walk off the field here, and, and we'll get ready to get started here tonight in the Crimson and Gold Spring Game. Of course, wrapping up all the action of spring football uh, here at Top Taggart Field as uh, the Bulldogs uh, looking forward to what should be an outstanding game. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. And, uh, again, this is kind of the, the culmination of all that work that they've been putting in, a chance right here to, to get out here and kind of make your final case here for – maybe where your position is going to be on the depth chart, uh, at least at the end of spring, and maybe looking ahead to what's going to happen in the fall. And so uh, this is a great opportunity for a lot of young guys in this program. Of course, uh, as is the case in a lot of these spring games uh, here, we're not going to have a lot of special teams action that will be live here in this contest as the clock is officially reset. It looks like we're going right into the opening kick. Here is the white team. Uh, we'll kick it away, and it will be Mitch Middleton that will put the ball on the tee here for the white team. And we've got representatives from both the, the white team and the red team back at the other end uh, here to receive this uh, kick. Yeah, definitely not going to see this in the regular season, so uh, enjoy this right now. So the kick uh, from Middleton, and we are underway here as this one spirals all the way down near the goal line. And they're going to come out. Of course, uh, no one on the return, and uh, it's going to be ran all the way back. I think Dion Small, one of the guys out there for the red team here, as uh, both teams will come out onto the field and we'll – Get underway uh, here in the Crimson and Gold spring game as the uh, white team and the red team will both take the field. Yeah, again, this is an opportunity to work on a lot of those things that you've been ha you've had drilled into you throughout practice and uh, a chance right here to see how you execute it. This is kind of the, the quiz, if you will, uh, or the test, if you will, for a lot of these guys here to see how they execute what they've been working on throughout the spring season. It's going to be the red team that will start with the football, and uh, one of the guys that uh, played a key role for the Bulldogs, one of the uh, guys that will play uh, at least a little bit here today, Carson Golker, will get the start at quarterback here, and, of course, led the country in rushing touchdowns last fall, an outstanding freshman season. Yeah, very uh, talented player who really kind of burst onto the scene here, and we had a chance to watch him up close and personal, and he just continued to grow and get better with each game. Man to his right here is Golker, uh, going to keep it here, bobbled the snap, able to tuck it here to the near side. And, of course, uh, no live hits here on the quarterbacks as he picks up a few yards here out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Yeah, we saw a lot of that during the season and things that the Bulldogs want to work on. And it starts with the running game for the Bulldogs. And, and again, that begins with that offensive line. And we watched that offensive line from game one all the way down through Texas uh, against Colorado School of Mines, that offensive line just continued to get better and better. 
Of course, a lot of young guys on that offensive line. A lot of those guys coming back here, and that's been a unit that's made a lot of progress here over the course of the springs. Gulker will work in the gun. He's got four receivers here in the formation and sends a man in motion. And the give straight ahead to Zamir Knighton here, uh, and he's going to be stopped here right about the line of scrimmage here at the 27 or 28-yard line. Yeah, solid job by that defensive line up front, able to kind of hold that line, cut off the running lanes, and a job by the defensive front. Zamir, uh, one of those guys that saw a lot of action last fall for the Bulldogs, and one of those guys that uh, really uh, finally broke some, some big runs uh, in postseason play for Ferro State last fall. Yeah, a talented player looking to get an opportunity here, and, and uh, he is a guy potentially very explosive running with the football. So the red team going to huddle up here, and one of the rare times we'll see the Bulldogs huddle up uh, here over the course of the season. Uh, chance here with the coaches right behind him on the field to really talk some strategy here as Golker will work out of the gun here from the right side. Hash trips to the left side of the formation here as he drops back to throw. Pressure coming, steps up in the pocket, delivers the short throw incomplete here. And I think that's going to be a three and out here for the defense as they hold uh, here on downs to start the contest. Solid job there by the defense, able to get a hand in there to knock that ball away. So again, the defense getting some early points on the board. They're going to pick up five points here on the three and out as uh, the white team gets the stop defensively and we'll have another special team situation here. And Levi Tuenstra will come on to punt the football away here as uh, the white team uh, Going to have a man back along with the red team as well uh, here on special teams. Reminder for tickets, scores, merchandise, video, and more. Be sure to log on to ferrostatebulldogs.com. I'd like to direct the attention uh, as well to the north end zone here at Top Taggart Field. Cedric Frierson down in the north end zone here. Special uh, seating area, premium seating area. The Bulldogs looking to unveil this fall. A uh, chance to get uh, a tent in uh, your own space uh, up to about 10 people. Uh, you can uh, visit ferrostatebulldogs.com uh, here in the uh, weeks ahead here for more information on uh, one of the premium seating options. Should be a great addition uh, here to the north end zone. That's going to be a prime spot. You're going to be right up there up close and personal being able to take in the game from a great vantage point. So that's going to be an attractive package for some people that are going to be looking for it. The white team uh, going to get the football here as uh, they trail here. Eight to nothing here on the scoreboard. Nine minutes remaining here in this first quarter of action. Of course, uh, a running clock here until the last couple minutes of each half as uh, a white team uh, will get set here offensively for their first series. And for the white team, I uh, believe at quarterback is going to be Jesse Rivera, who will get the start here as he works out of the gun here for the white squad. Option pitch to the right side here to James Kobe, who spins forward, gets a couple yards before that defensive swarm. Drives him over to the far sideline. Of course, the Bulldogs, uh, one of the best defensive units in the country a year ago. Yeah, you can see that speed right there. Good job there by James, avoiding the first potential hit there. Able to get a couple of yards out of it with forward progress. So nice job there by James before the Cavalry came and able to push him back. James, another one of those young running backs here for the Bulldogs. Uh, that was a young unit last year. Obviously, Marcus Taylor uh, shifted to the running back position later on in the year, but they've got a lot of those young guys coming back and some guys we haven't seen uh, that uh, we may see uh, here over the course of the spring game. Yeah, a lot of guys getting some experience here, and uh, they're looking forward to their name being called. Four receivers set here on second and eight as they give it off to Kobe again. He bounces outside to the right side. Going to be close to the first down as he lowers the shoulder on the yeah. far sideline. And yeah, I think we might have a hold over there on the edge. So we may have our first penalty flag, perhaps, as he got right near the uh, first down markers in red team territory at about the 45-yard line. But uh, they're going to shift this one back as the flag laying right on the number 50 numerals over on the far sideline. Yeah, a little bit of a hold right there on the edge is trying to turn that corner. A little extra help there as officials right there on top of it with the flag. So that'll shift the football all the way back here to the 39-yard line here in White team territory, almost to the midway point uh, here of this first quarter of action. Eight to nothing, the white squad in front of the red squad here in the Crimson and Gold spring game. And we've had a number of these spring games uh, here in years past that have really came down uh, right to the very end. Uh, some tight contests and part of the uh, modified scoring format really helps to kind of fuel uh, some of that energy here as we move forward over the course of the game. Gets that competitiveness really going. And these guys certainly, if it's close, they're going to want to go for it. Rivera will send a man in motion. They're going to keep it on the ground. Kobe again right up the middle behind the offensive line. Picks up a couple yards. 
as some substitutions continue to be made uh, for the white team. Cam Underwood coming on as one of the receivers. Uh, played a key role during the stretch run last year for the Bulldogs. Uh, really forced into action with some of the injuries to Xavier Wade, Tyrese on Thompson. Uh, and the Bulldogs uh, certainly love to have those guys back, but a uh, great opportunity uh, last fall for Cam Underwood and some of those younger guys. Yeah, he was pressed into duty, but really did a good job of stepping up. And, and again, those are the kind of things that you hate to see injuries crop up but boy uh, it's really gratifying uh, in the injury when you can see some young guys really step in then you get those injured guys back and now all of a sudden you have greater depth and uh, even more weapons to be able to attack opponents from the right side hash here at the 41 yard line the white team with the football here and what will be third and about 13 or 14 yards to go here is Rivera will work out of the gun Gonna fake the give. Jesse back to throw here across the middle. Finds Underwood. Of which. And gonna be marked maybe a yard short here on the first down, but a nice hook up here. And this may make the decision uh, to go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, we were just hyping him up right there. And then Cam right on call, able to get uh, right there within a yard of a first down. Uh, check that. Maybe two yards. Of course, Jesse Rivera, a guy that uh, saw some action last fall for the Bulldogs. He's a talented young guy. The Bulldogs uh, really stacked at quarterback when you look at the return of Carson Golker. Uh, obviously, Malik Mitchell uh, not in uniform here today, but uh, they'll have him back this coming fall. So really a lot of depth at that quarterback position. Yeah, a lot of depth and a lot of guys that can really complement each other. So if you need to use multiple quarterbacks, they can all come in and bring you added dimensions there and then some young guys that are coming up too some other young guys that are coming up that are going to be very very good in this program in the future call it uh, fourth down and about two yards to go as they move to a little bit of a power look Rivera with a man to his right twins to the left side here on fourth and two as he sends a man around in motion in Tariq Brett the give here to Kobe off the left side he's got the first down as the pile Drives him forward. Uh, nice work by that offensive line here on the near side. Lawrence Hattar and some of the guys on the left side of the offensive line creating some space. Good push there by the O-line. Good forward lean as well. Got the first down and uh, maybe two and a half extra yards on top of it. So great job. Power running there by the offensive line. From the 43 now, first down in 10. Big thanks goes out to Pepsi and Gatorade for their support of Ferris State Athletics. We're live from Top Taggart Field, the Crimson and Gold Spring Game. Right here on Sunny 97.3 and, of course, online at FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Trips to the right side here in a four-receiver set for Jesse Rivera as he motions out James Kobe. So now five receivers here in the formation. One-step drop here as he looks across the middle and hooks up with Tariq Brett. And the slot receiver here, another first down here for the white team as he's a, another talented young guy. Uh, the Bulldogs uh, really feel confident uh, with a lot of these young slot receivers, so much so that we saw C.J. Jefferson practicing as a defensive back here over the course of the spring. You can see all those weapons right there. You motion to an empty backfield, and all of a sudden you got a lot of weapons out there as uh, – President Pink right there on the field getting a good look at it. He's having a conversation with head coach Tony Anise. Of course, President Pink on hand to help honor the volleyball team as well. Coming up here at the end of the first quarter as they will be presented their GLIAC championship rings. First down and 10 here for the white squad. Rivera in the gun. Get a four receiver package as Jeremiah Housie to the near side with it on the sweep. Chased down from behind. Good open field stop here made on the near side by the red team as the tackle was made by Jason Williams here, the linebacker for the red unit. Yeah, Jason Williams, very talented young linebacker there and showing that uh, secondary uh, type speed there to run that one down. A few more uh, extra coaches coming on hand here for the white team as they want to dial up <laughs> uh, a play here that can get them a first down here inside of three minutes to go here in this first quarter. You know, it looked like a critical play right there as uh, had a lot of the brain trust right there trying to map this one out. Two receivers off to the far side of the formation and uh, one back to the near side as they send a man in motion. It'll be Kobe uh, on the fake. Rivera will option pitch it to the right side. Ooh. And this is going to be very close to a first down here, sure. down inside the 25. It'll be about a yard short right there. Is, uh, made the late pitch right there. And good job there by the defense holding them just short. So this will set up, uh, looks like uh, third and short here from about the 23 yard line. Need about a yard or two uh, here, depending on the spot of the football. As the Bulldogs uh, get set here in the huddle, of course, Ferris State opening up the 2023 season here under the lights at home against Mercyhurst on October 31st. Season tickets are on sale now. You could visit FerrisStateBulldogs.com during the month of April, a chance to win a 
uh, national championship uh, beanie with every season ticket purchase. The give to James Kobe here up the middle, and uh, looks like it's going to be another first down before the pile is able to drive him backwards. Good surge up front right there. Defensive line held a little bit, but able to move the chains here for a first down. Tailback's getting a lot of work here early in the Crimson and Gold game. 12-0 here on the scoreboard with about 90 seconds to go here in this first quarter of action as they drive from the south to the north here at Top Taggart Field. And the red defense uh, trying to stand up to the challenge right now. You know, try to find a way. Uh, you can really turn the tide of this one very quickly if you can get a turnover uh, here defensively. i tell you what, turnovers matter, and they can get one right now and put a big scratch over there on that scoreboard. Rivera going to fake the give again, looking across Plant. the middle to the end zone. And no flags here on the play. Was trying to hook up with Jeremiah Housie coming in from the outside. And you can see looking for that slant right there. Good coverage there to deny that one. So this uh, sets up uh, another second and ten situation here for the white unit. Uh, Rivera right now is taking the snaps for the white team. And, of course, uh, for the red team it was Carson Goldker, but we've got some other talented quarterbacks we'll see. Trinidad Chambliss had a great spring for the Bulldogs. Zach Ahern, of course, the Rockford product as well with an outstanding spring here for Ferro State among some other guys. So really uh, a lot of young depth uh, at quarterback, as we mentioned a little bit earlier. Yeah, talented young depth. Guys, we've seen uh, – Really do some great things, uh, those of us who have been able to take in a number of these practices. So Rivera will look to his left side here as he works off the right side hash. We'll send a man in motion. Sweet. They give it off on the sweep to the near side. Good pursuit Good here key. again by Jason Williams Bubble. here. The ball pops loose, and I think it's going to be recovered by the red team. It looks like it was here as the red defense comes up with the turnover as Bryce Berta, I think, was the man that uh, fell on top of the football. So big takeaway for the red. They're going to pick up six. That uh, right now puts them right back in the ball game with the score at 12 to six here at the end of the first quarter of action. The Bulldogs here on the Crimson and Gold Spring Game will uh, take a quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds right after this timeout on Sunny 97.3. Field and live coverage of Ferris State football. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you here at the end of the first quarter where the white team leads the red team 12 to 6. And we're joined now down on the field by members of the Ferris State women's volleyball team, which captured the 2022 GLIAC regular season and tournament championships. Congratulations to the Ferris State volleyball team. The Bulldogs will present their GLIAC championship rings here to members of their team and with us today to help uh, present those rings, the president of Ferris State University, Dr. Bill Pink, along with athletic director, Steve Brocklebank. And also a big thanks goes out to the Ferris Foundation for helping sponsor these championship rings from the Ferris Foundation. Kathy Mullins, vice president for university advancement and marketing, along with Arlen Gaddy, chair of the Ferris Foundation board, and Jennifer Cutter, chair elect of the Ferris Foundation board. We thank the members of the foundation for being here today to help present these GLIAC championship rings. Head coach Tia Brando Wilhelm down on the field along with members of her team as they take a couple quick photos here and we'll present the individuals here to come uh, receive their GLIAC championship rings. We'll do this in numerical order and we'll start uh, first as the photos are wrapped up uh, here down on the field with number one, Tatum Outlaw. Tatum Outlaw, the first recipient here of her GLIAC championship ring. Number two, here it will be Jessica Angelo. Also for the Bulldogs today, an outside hitter, Claire Nowicki. Another member of this Ferris State volleyball team, a sophomore middle hitter, Olivia Henneman Delape. Next up, outside hitter, a freshman from Detroit, Morgan Lockhart.
Our next Bulldog Volleyball honoree, uh, freshman outside hitter from Champaign, Illinois, Emma Bleacher. And as they uh, work on uh, getting these championship rings sorted out, Sandy, obviously uh, another great season here for Ferris State Volleyball. Yeah, you talk about the tradition of fall excellence, and it really uh, – starts or is right there with Bulldog Volleyball. They have set the bar really high, really from a long time ago, too. Our next uh, honoree, a junior here for the Bulldogs, middle hitter, Chelsea Freeman. Following uh, Chelsea, we have a freshman middle hitter from LaGrange Park, Illinois, Ivy Shadich. She'll be followed by one of the top setters in the country, a sophomore, Kaylee Mutt. Following uh, Kaylee, we have a middle hitter, a sophomore from North Muskegon, Cyan Fairfield. Another uh, GLIAC champion for the Bulldogs is sophomore out of Illinois, the libero, Leah Bylet. A sophomore outside hitter from Battle Creek, number 17, Hannah Tecumseh. Also with us, a 5'11 freshman out of Fort Myers, Florida, an outside hitter, number 19, Logan Guerin. And our final player here today for the Bulldogs is sophomore setter, number 20, Bailey Torpy. Bulldogs would also like to honor a couple key support staff members uh, here for this Ferris State Volleyball team. We'll start with the strength coach here for the Bulldogs, Andrew Thede. And our athletic trainer, Dylan Pavka. And last but certainly not least, we have two coaches that uh, made a big impact, obviously, on Ferris State Volleyball and the Bulldog Volleyball Program. Assistant coach, Hannah Wiest. And head coach, Kia Brando-Wilhelm. Congratulations to the GLIAC champion, Ferris State Volleyball team. Outstanding, uh, again, here, uh, support from the Ferris Foundation and helping uh, provide these championship rings. Yeah, we're so grateful to the to the great uh, donors and, and supporters who make the Ferris Foundation what it is and, and their contributions to supporting and recognizing athletic championship success and, and, and uh, the foundation seeing that and recognizing that and giving these student athletes this kind of a moment right here, a reward for all the hard work that they put in is really just a, a great thing all the way around. And again, we're very grateful to the Ferris Foundation. So the Bulldog Volleyball team uh, will be coming off the field here shortly. We'll get back to action where the white team leads the red team 12 to six in the Crimson and Gold Spring game. A reminder to fans, the membership drive for the Gridiron Club is underway now after a record breaking year last fall. Don't miss out, visit FerrisStateBulldogs.com to find out more. Obviously the Gridiron Club, a huge support uh, mechanism uh, here for Ferris State football for so many years. Yeah, the Gridiron Club is uh, just uh, one of the backbones here and just uh, their support uh, for Bulldog football. And we just decided that the, the Gridiron Club just continues to grow and develop and with more and more dedicated members coming in and wanting to continue to raise the bar to support the Bulldog football student athletes. And, and that's just a great thing uh, just to have these people that really are invested in the success of our student athletes. Of course, uh, as we go back down to the field right now, uh, Carson Golker got the first series for the red team. And it looks like uh, coming out a quarterback uh, here for the red unit here to start series number two. It'll be Zach Ahern, the Rockford product uh, that'll take the snaps here for the red unit as he keeps it right up the middle here and takes a hit in the hole as they make it live on him here. He picks up a couple yards, and, of course, uh, 
played some high school football at Rockford under uh, Jason Vanderlaan, who's uh, his coach here today, is an honorary coach uh, here for the Red Team. Yeah, just uh, a really talented young quarterback, very physical quarterback, and not afraid to stick his nose in there and, and uh, go and uh, meet that contact right there. And he showed that he is going to be a good one for this program. So the Red Team picks up a couple of yards here as uh, they try to cut this deficit down. Head coach Tony Anise and the Bulldogs wrapping up spring football that began uh, here just the day before the national championship parade in downtown Big Rapids. Been uh, some great opportunities for the fans really to celebrate this national championship over the course of the last few months. It has, and uh, you mentioned uh, the merchandise for sale, and we're seeing a lot of merchandise throughout the stadium and beyond, and so a lot of people really just wanting little mementos here as we see another uh, run off the outside. Zach doing a good job staying on his feet over on that far sideline here as he runs hard off the right side. Picks up some more yardage here as this will be third and a little more manageable four or five yards here to pick up the first down. Yeah, just a nice job right there. We show, we saw him uh, just a little bit ago pounded on the inside and that time showing a little bit of that speed and ability to get to the edge. Coach Nice uh, kind of getting in the huddle right there. Uh, does not do a lot, whole lot of coaching, uh, kind of leaves it to his assistant coaches here during this spring game. But uh, every once in a while, you know, he's going to uh, say something right there in the huddle. Oh, yeah, he's going to make his voice heard now and then just to make sure if something really needs to be said, he'll step in there. Trips to the left side here for Zach Ahern as he has a man to the right side of him here in the offensive formation. Here on third and about three or four yards, 10-15 to play here in the first half as he rolls out near side looking for his first pass perhaps. No, he's going to keep it on the ground, trying to make some shifty moves here and gets it near the 30-yard line, picked up a yard or two. And now decision time here with uh, fourth down coming up uh, here for the red team. Yeah, good swarm by the white defense there, able to get there. And a nice job by Zach really to at least get uh, probably a couple of yards out of it and uh, what should have been uh, no gain. Uh, he's able to make something out of Pretty much nothing, so great job right there. But again, solid job by the defense. Great speed right there to take away the edge and kind of force him to make some big time moves there to just get back uh, that couple of yards. Exchange on downs here is uh, we've got Brody Kaiser down on the field. We'll see if we can go live to Brody right now with the head coach of the Ferris State Bulldogs, Tony Anise. Coach, it's been a busy spring for you guys, but it's gotta be a good feeling to be out here on the field. Well, Brody, it hasn't been all that busy, so. Uh, I've really had a good opportunity to play a lot of pickleball, work out, and really not worry about too much stuff other than that. What are you looking to see here today? Just uh, have fun. I mean, this crowd actually is better than it, uh, it was when we first started for home games. So, so it's pretty incredible. Just to have fun and get people you know, excited about Bulldog football. A lot of former Bulldogs back in the house today. and. Uh, uh, representing the other Bulldog athletic teams, that message of Bulldog th athletics, the family, it's got to be just so cool to be able to do that here tonight. It's tremendous, you know, men's basketball, women's basketball back here, soccer over there, volleyball over there, and so, uh, and then a lot of other teams, but it's been a bit of incredible support. Um, plus we get these, so these are pretty cool rings. So, um, yeah, so it's an exciting day. Thanks, Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. Rob, Sandy. And thanks to Brody down on the field with the head coach of the Ferris State Bulldogs, Tony Anise here as the white team gets the football back. Going to be Trinidad Chambliss on the move, and he's got a lot of room to run. Gets it back into red team territory as that will help them increase their total here on the scoreboard. Yeah, that left side just opened up for Trinidad, and he uh, he must have saw, uh, must have had to blink a couple times just to make sure his eyes were seeing what he was seeing there. He saw a lot of green space right there getting over toward the sideline. They are going to pull it back here to about the 40-yard uh, line here on the white half of the field. So I'm not sure if there was a flag or not, but uh, obviously uh, not live on many of the quarterbacks here today. So uh, they're going to bring this one back to about the 40-yard line here with 7.40 to play in the first half. The white team leads the red team 17-6 to and still looking for our first touchdown here of the evening at Top Taggart Field. So the white team uh, will come out here and uh, power look here off the left side hash tight formation here as uh, they send a man in motion back to the wide side of the field. And it's going to be a keeper here. Nice cut back up the middle here uh, before uh, the defense collapses in on Trinidad Chambliss, uh, who gets the call here on this series. Yeah, he's got uh, a lot of ability, a lot of talent there, and some moves that he uh, shows right there. And uh, he's a talented young quarterback, and we talked about the depth that the Bulldogs have at quarterback, and he is certainly a part of that. 
You look uh, at a lot of young guys uh, here on this Bulldog uh, team, and uh, obviously some guys highlighted here on our roster that are not going to play here today. Uh, young guys like uh, Brady Rose, uh, Tyrese Hunt Thompson still uh, just finished his sophomore season here for the Bulldogs. So uh, a lot of young talent, especially at the skill positions here for Ferris State. Yeah, a lot of guys coming back and some guys coming off of injuries too that uh, are looking forward to uh, kind of making sure that their name is heard right there as uh, a little miscommunication right there on that pass play. So that one incomplete, had a man downfield, not able to quite hook up right there as the white team uh, will get set here uh, with fourth down, I believe, coming up already here on this series. So the defense uh, kind of been uh, controlling play so far uh, here in this Crimson and Gold spring game. And obviously the defense under Ryan Hodges, uh, uh, the other Tony Anise, uh, that unit uh, last season, uh, one of the best, especially at the end of the season. Yeah, I tell you what, they were playing some lights-out defense toward the end of the year and, and probably no more evident than what we saw in the national championship game uh, against one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, one of the best offenses in the nation. The Bulldog defense played some lights-out football. Certainly can't forget about Tesla Smith, defensive line coach, uh, Grant Caserta, the linebackers coach, and other members of that defensive staff, uh, which have – Help that unit uh, really uh, get better and better here over the years for the Bulldogs. Exactly. As, as the names and faces of, of the student athletes change as part of the game, uh, the, the tradition continues. And we talked about handing it off to the next generation of guys that are coming up. And, and one of the stabilizing forces to help make that happen is the great coaching staff that we've been able to keep. So the red team going to get the football back here late in this first half of action is they try to close the gap. They're back within three here at 17 to 14 after the defensive stop. So uh, certainly uh, have battled back from an early deficit uh, here against the white team and looking to move the football here and maybe put some points on the board here before halftime. Yeah, looking like another tight battle here between uh, these uh, two sides here as uh, we've seen uh, almost as a tradition in this crimson and gold game. We've got uh, some great games coming up at halftime involving some of the other Ferris State athletic teams. Uh, we'll introduce you to the 2023 National Signing Day class as well. Many of those uh, recruits on hand here uh, getting ready to join the Bulldog program this fall. Long run broke off the far side here and a first down pickup here for the red team. Some good hard running off the right side of the uh, line here for the red squad. Yeah, good job right there. Good strong running. You mentioned it. Good blocking right there on the edge. and. Kind of explosive run, able to break some tackles. Dorian Riley, I believe, on the carry there for the red team, uh, coming off that right side as they mix in some other running backs. Uh, a lot of young talent at running back as well. Some guys that uh, haven't seen the field just yet for the Bulldogs, many of them coming off uh, redshirt freshman seasons and uh, certainly uh, expected to contend uh, for some playing time uh, here this coming fall. Riley to the left side. Here is uh, Golker back on, throws it Boom. down the middle and had a man open, uh, collision down at the 40-yard line as uh, this one intended uh, downfield for James Gilbert, the wide receiver. Carson trying to thread the needle there a little bit and not quite able to make the connection there. Beautiful uh, Friday evening here for the Crimson and Gold spring game here. And, uh, as uh, we see the Bulldogs do each and every year, especially in postseason play, when the weather uh, uh, really uh, turns nasty, gets uh, worse, the Bulldogs well accustomed to it. They they do this uh, all spring. We saw some days out here where it was 80 <laughs> degrees. We saw some days out here where it was raining and snowing uh, here at Top Taggart Field this spring. Yeah, we started off the spring uh, walking through uh, drifts of snow and ice uh, to get to the field, and now uh, here we are with much better weather. Trips left side here is the give uh, here off the near end and a good hard collision here at the 45-yard line. But about a five-yard pickup here for Riley again here on the carry off the near side. Some good physical play right there, good physical run, and not shying away from that contact. Big thanks goes out to Meyer and Gatorade, the official nutrition and hydration partners of the Bulldogs. You're in tune to Bulldog football right here on Sunny 97.3 and online, FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you here. Live video coverage as well, uh, courtesy of Ferris State Television. And live here in the stadium uh, over the public address system uh, here at Top Taggart Field. So the red team will line up here uh, from the 45-yard line, right in the center of the field. As Golker has a man to his right, trips back left side with a man to the right, out wide here for the red unit. He'll set a man in motion here as uh, they come back to the near side. Golker takes the snap, back to throw. Carson rolls out right side, looking across the middle and hooks up here into white team territory over on that far sideline. And a nice pickup here by his slot, Amari O'Brien, here for the red team, a guy that got some time in the slot last fall for the Bulldogs. Well, Ferris has been slot you, and you can see uh, some of these uh, young guys that are coming up in the program and 
looking to uh, make their name heard uh, in that slot U. When you mentioned that, uh, the great slot receivers that have come out of this program over the years under Coach Anise and the staff, and uh, that tradition continues here. You mentioned slot U. I think uh, I've, I've heard defensive line U, obviously, with some of the great <laughs> defensive linemen we've had here for the Bulldogs. And you go all the way back uh, even to the 90s, early 2000s, it was linebacker U here with the, the guys wearing the 4, 5, and 6 jerseys. So uh, a lot of tradition here in a lot of different positions. Absolutely, and uh, guys that take a lot of pride and especially in some of those numbers that some of the guys wear, and uh, definitely a lot of pride. So pitch here to the near side, and uh, about a five or six yard pickup. Of course, uh, the Bulldogs awaiting the NFL draft with uh, Caleb Murphy uh, next week, and some other Bulldogs trying to make their uh, case known uh, for an opportunity in professional football. We already see a few guys playing in professional leagues this spring. Uh, three guys on the field at the same time the other night in the opening weekend of the USFL. Yeah, that's great. And we mentioned uh, some of these leagues that have uh, come back, and it's really provided some opportunities for a lot of the, the great talent that we have at this level to be able to, to continue their careers playing professionally and playing professionally right here in the United States. Of course, a couple uh, honorary coaches down on the field right now is uh, we've got a timeout here and uh, 46 seconds left here. Uh, the white team and the red team here going at it here today is uh, we try to get. Uh, it's like coach is calling for a reset here. He's going to add some time uh, here to the score clock uh, I think here. He, I think he wants 120. There we go. So 120 going to be put on the board here uh, with the red team in front, 18 to 17. But two honorary uh, coaches uh, here today, Jason Vanderlaan, Austin Edwards, both among the many guys that had opportunities in professional football. Yeah, it did, and, and it started right here. And, uh, you know, Jason, uh, with the, that class that he was a part of, they were kind of that group that really got the Bulldogs on the map right here as Carson rolling out. And that one, uh, no one downfield uh, as the pressure was coming from the outside, ruled incomplete here. So that'll uh, keep the clock moving here as we approach the one-minute mark to go here in this first half of play. 18-17, the red team in front of the white team uh, here at Top Taggart Field. Uh, the class you uh, referenced right there with Jason Vanderlaan, obviously Justin Zimmer, uh, who's with the Miami Dolphins, uh, Jake Lampman right now uh, trying to make an opportunity uh, for himself in the CFL. So some, some guys that uh, try to continue playing, uh, even uh, from that class uh, which uh, graduated all the way back in 2015. Yeah, we uh, you know, that was the group that uh, when Coach Anise came in and the staff, and they were able to get things going right here. And, and that group really uh, is, uh, can take a lot of credit for really getting this tradition going. And uh, they took uh, a lot of their talents to the NFL to the highest level and uh, continue to remain connected to the program. Dulker back to throw, looking outside, hooks oh. up uh, almost with O'Brien. Not able to hold on down over at the 30-yard line here with 59 seconds to go. Here in the first half, that would have been enough for a first down over on that far side. Yeah, just trying to maybe think about turning that ball upfield and getting ready for the big play here. As, uh, you can see uh, we're taking a look at the replay right here and just a, kind of a quick throw to the outside. We'll uh, introduce many of the former players back in attendance coming up here at the end of the third quarter. Going to try to do it by era based on uh, the coach uh, that they played for here at Ferris State and obviously some Outstanding coaches over the years here for the Bulldogs in terms of head coaches. Uh, you think all the way back to Bob Leach, uh, Nick Coso, uh, obviously Keith Otterbein, Jeff Pierce, uh, a lot of different players, but uh, the tradition uh, kind of lives on here under Coach Tony Anise and the Bulldogs. Yeah, we saw, you know, a lot of alumni from all of those eras, you know, uh, just not only uh, down in Texas, down in McKinney, Texas, but uh, really just uh, throughout the season, you know, especially you go in that tailgate and you just see so many different eras represented here and uh, all taking pride in what this program is doing right now. This will be about a 43-yard try to the north end from Eddie Jewett on the field goal attempt, and it's got the distance. Thank it's you. up and good as Jewett converts. Had an outstanding freshman season for the Bulldogs last fall and a big kick right here uh, to put the white team in front, and that brings a big smile to the face of uh, a legend out on the field, Coach Jack Sugars here, uh, helping with the special teams units here for the Bulldogs. Yep, steady Eddie, they call him in. Had a big kick in the, the win over Grand Valley and uh, just a great, great young kicker. So Eddie uh, wearing the uh, white jersey, but uh, those points going to count for the red. So it's a 21 to 17 score here in our modified scoring system as Levi Tuenstra will come on to kick it away again uh, here. A lot of young guys at the kicker position. Uh, Eddie just a freshman last year. Uh, Obviously, Levi, a freshman as well. Mitch Middleton uh, right there in terms of the age as well uh, here. So some young depth uh, here in the kicking game for the Bulldogs. Absolutely. And uh, just got to feel good about what the Bulldogs have right there. And uh, 
those guys able to execute, and that's that's the big part of special teams is being able to execute and get the job done. 59 seconds to go here before halftime is uh, two back deep waiting to receive here at about the 20. Got a back pedal here to back inside the 20, and it'll be Deion Small, I believe, over on that far sideline on the return, uh, perhaps. Uh, tough to read the number here from all the way up uh, on the third floor here at Top Taggart Field. So it looks like uh, under a minute to go here. Let's see what uh, what they could put together offensively. Still waiting on uh, kind of that big explosive offensive play right here to get into the end zone. That's uh, going to be on the minds of some of these guys. So the white team uh, will get the football back here. Again, some special games coming up involving some of the other teams at halftime uh, here down on the field at Top Taggart Field before we have the second half. And uh, the Bulldogs uh, a chance to uh, really uh, maybe treat the fans here to uh, some special competitions. Uh, we have a field goal competition coming up to wrap it up between the Ferris State men's basketball team and the women's soccer team. Bulldog men's basketball looking for a little bit of revenge after last year. <laughs> Quick hitter right there with the rush. Rivera able to hook up with Jeremiah Housie uh, out to midfield down the sideline. And going to be uh, forced out of bounds here at about the 35-yard line. Nice play with the pressure coming as Rivera completes the pass across the middle to the outside. Good job there by Jesse. Kind of felt that pass rush coming right at his chest. And good job of locking in on his receiver and getting that ball out quickly. Top of the hour, 6 o'clock. You're in tune to Ferro State football right here on the voice of the Bulldogs, Sunny 97.3 and online at FerroStateBulldogs.com. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you here from Top Taggart Field, where the red team in front of the white team here late in this first half of play, or at least on the scoreboard they were, but uh, not sure those points have been added up uh, just yet here for the white team. So the white team will get the football here at the 35-yard line after the big pickup. Rivera in the gun. We'll send a man back in motion. They fake the give. Jesse steps up in the pocket. And now looking upfield, uh, trying to find Underwood. Uh, Deep uh, here inside the 10, but not able to quite hook up on the throw. A little bit of a broken play right there. Good job by Jesse stepping up in the pocket. And great work there by Cam to try to free himself up there as Jesse tried to thread the needle. See some other guys, uh, some other former players walking up and down the sideline. Uh, nice to have Jake Doherty on hand here today. The Big Rapids native, uh, self-proclaimed mayor of Big Rapids uh, back in town <laughs> here today. Uh, the mayor is in the house. White team uh, will get the football uh, here with the ball spotted here at the 35. 43 seconds left before halftime as Rivera moves his tailback here to the right side of the formation. Facing a four-man front here as he looks outside and not able to hook up here on the near sideline was trying to find Tariq Brett. Another talented uh, slot here for the Bull Knights coming off a redshirt freshman season. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of talent right there, some young guys. Looking forward to their opportunities here. Bulldogs are going to have so many of those guys in the slot here coming into the fall. Of course, a little easier to read. Uh, a lot of the playmaker skill position type guys. Uh, we've got some battles going on, though, up front here where the Bulldogs on both the offensive and defensive lines, uh, a lot of depth, a lot of guys uh, vying for playing time to try to fill some of the shoes of the guys that were lost to graduation. Yeah, some big names that were lost, but yet uh, some guys, again, learning uh, at the hands of some of those great players and not ready to take their turn and do something with it. Call it third and ten here for Rivera, looking over the top here. Got him. Can you make and, the adjustment? And uh, well defended over there on that first oh! line, but a flag thrown. So a flag thrown right at the goal line, and I'm not sure uh, the red team agrees with it here defensively. It's going to be against the red team right there. So big penalty right there as we look at the replay. Jesse loading up right there and taking a look at the replay right there. Uh, a little, little contact downfield right there. Flag coming out. A well, flag is thrown here. I think that was Roro Purdue over there on coverage here for the red team and uh, had pretty good coverage. Uh, but uh, the flag thrown against him here is that to move the football here down inside uh, the 20 yard line. So in the red zone right at the 20 here for the white team is they try to uh, kind of cut into this uh, margin here before halftime. I believe picked up a first down right there by penalty here as Rivera will Quickly uh, step over the football here. Now going to back away here into the gun at the 25. A man to the right side of him here. See what the red team elects to do here with the pressure. Rivera looking back to the near sideline and not uh, able to hook up here on the near side as the hit was coming uh, from the outside defensively. And on coverage, it was Johnny Matt here wearing the number one jersey. Yeah, that's one you like to have back right there. Good job there getting open and just not quite able to pull it down. Great job running the route. 
Under 28 seconds left here before halftime as the white team will huddle up here and uh, wait and see uh, what they decide to do here as members of our other athletic programs down on the field uh, starting to get ready. Starting to get loose. Uh, Coach Bronco down there, we'll have to see if he's involved in the competitions or not. He may be the best kicker on the men's basketball team. I was going to say, Coach Bronco was a busy week here. Had the heart-to-heart, hand-in-hand game. Here's a going up top into the corner. Trying to find Underwood. Did he hold on? Touchdown, Bulldogs. As Underwood hauls it in off the throw from Rivera into the back corner of the end zone. Great job there on the adjustment there by Cam. As going into the corner on that fade. Great ball thrown by Jesse as well to get the ball up there and cam that uh, those uh, snaps that he got uh, last year pressed into duty pays off for him right there great job right there seeing the ball high pointing the ball and bringing it down so just 21 seconds left before halftime and the white team back in front 25 21 here on the scoreboard as Jewett is on for the point after and the hold is down kick is on the way and the kick is up and good as Jewett converts here for the white team uh, here to make it 26 to 21. I think Coach Anise uh, signaling to run the clock <laughs> here, and it looks like that uh, may do it for our first half of action here at the Crimson and Gold Spring Game. Outstanding event so far here at Top Taggart Field where the white team leads the red team 26 to 21. We'll take a 60-second break. Back with more halftime coverage after this timeout right here on Sunny 97.3. State football coverage here at halftime. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you. Where the white team leads the red team 26 to 21 at the break. And some special competitions going to take place here at halftime. As I believe we'll have an obstacle course to start it off uh, with the Ferris State men's and women's basketball teams uh, set to compete here in this obstacle course event. Uh, of course, that'll be followed by the Punt catching out of the jugs machine with the volleyball and women's basketball teams and also the field goal competition between soccer and men's basketball as they try to get all of these games and activities set here and uh, some spirited competition uh, here to kind of get it started uh, here today. Yeah, it's going to be some spirited competition for sure. I mean, you got a lot of competitiveness out there and uh, a lot of people that do not like to lose. And so you know that uh, that competitiveness is going to really kind of rise up here as this competition gets going. Trying to get the jugs machine going here as uh, one of our women's basketball players back deep here and uh, trying to get it uh, set to the right spot and a big catch made over there on that far sideline. Uh, I think that was <laughs> Mallory McCartney maybe uh, for the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah, look at that. A couple chest bumps right there. And you can see uh, everybody has to get Mallory fired up. Interesting to see what this obstacle course is going to be back uh, at the north side as they try to get that set up as well. And uh Oh, oh, this is a tough one. Oh, this one sells past uh, over on that far side. Uh, a little too long there as it reaches midfield. Uh, that one got the wind behind it right there. So they'll get a couple opportunities here to warm up as uh, we continue action uh -oh. here at Top Taggart Field in the spring game. And <laughs> we'll see uh, when we get this uh, competition officially started, maybe underway. It's uh, tough to tell from up here at the press box, but uh, they're getting some good opportunities nonetheless. I don't know. It looks pretty serious out there right now. Uh, this one's a little better. A little, oh! Oh, that's tough. We got Brody Kaiser down on the field now. Uh, Going to try to connect with uh, 
Ferris State football, Gene Upshaw, Division II lineman of the year, Caleb Murphy down on the field. Caleb, good to see you back in Big Rapids. What's it been like? It's nice to be home. You know, my little brother's here, so it's really nice to see him perform. Um, you know, other than that, it's just good to be back and see all these Bulldogs. What's the spring game been like from a spectator perspe perspective? Yeah, the guys look like they're rebuilding, you know, looking to win another national championship. So it's really nice to see, you know, uh, they still got a Murphy on the field, so it's really nice. What's it been like going through the draft process for you? Yeah, the draft process has been good. Uh, the combine, the pro day, everything else, you know, uh, just being a part of it, you know, just trying to be a leader in that aspect for the teammates here and then for my brother, you know, it's really nice. Thanks, Caleb. Appreciate your time. No problem. Appreciate you. And thanks to Brody Kaiser down on the field uh, here on the Bulldogs Sports Network with Caleb Murphy as uh, the women's basketball team over there celebrating. Might have won a competition uh, right I, there. I think volleyball just got back into it right there. As, uh, this, is, uh, this is a tightly contested battle right there. A little bit of a bobble right there, but great job by volleyball to secure it. Still see uh, Coach Bronkema out there awaiting his turn uh, to maybe compete as uh, he's uh, one of those guys I think that uh, thinks he could maybe win all of these competitions here today. Yes, he does. Uh, Coach Anise is uh, the competitor for sure right there. Is, uh, we're seeing uh, some uh, good special teams work right here by a couple of our uh, women's athletic teams right here showing some great hands. Before we get this second half started uh, here shortly, we'll introduce uh, members of the Ferris State Football National Signing Day class. Of course, announced uh, here this past February on National Signing Day is uh, – the Bulldogs celebrate over there across the field, but great to have uh, some of those incoming kids on hand here, and they're going to play a, a big role here for the, the Bulldogs in the years ahead. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, you know, you know, we uh, we look forward to signing day, National Signing Day, and it's just a, it's a big thing uh, at really all levels of football. And so it's always exciting to, to hear the names called and, and to, to know that you're going to look uh, three, four, five, six years down the line, and you're going to see some guys that uh, – you maybe didn't know as much about at the time, but they've emerged as guys that are cornerstones of the success of this program, the continued success of this program. Of course, uh, Ferris State football will receive its championship rings tomorrow. Again, congratulations uh, to Bulldog Volleyball earlier today receiving their GLEAC championship rings. Uh, Rings uh, courtesy of the Ferris Foundation, uh, an integral part of uh, providing those championship rings. And uh, if you're a student athlete, uh, really uh, one of the, the goals uh, you set for yourself is to win a conference title or to go to a NCAA postseason uh, championship event. And obviously uh, in football's case to win a couple national titles uh, uh, well beyond maybe the dreams of, of a lot of these guys coming in. And uh, certainly uh, those uh, funds from the Ferris Foundation help uh, make uh, those memories uh, kind of last forever. It does. And it's a great reward, you know. And, and, you know, it's awesome that the Ferris Foundation recognizes that and, and student athletes and, and coaches and support staff that really do so much to put uh, Ferris State in a championship light and, and to put Ferris State on a national stage. And it's really great to see. And, and, and for all the hard work, it's really great to see them get recognition. It looks like Coach Anise has crowned the women's basketball team. Congratulations to Bulldog women's basketball, uh, head coach Kurt Westendorp and the women's basketball team. Uh, looking forward to what should be an outstanding season uh, coming up next season for that women's basketball program. Uh, a lot of young talent in that program as well. And uh, I get some uh, players back uh, that were injured this past season. Should be an exciting team to watch here in the years ahead. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, some young players uh, coming up and they got a lot of playing time this year. And, and some of those players that you mentioned that were injured, uh, they, uh, they've been working hard during uh, this past season to get themselves right. They'll continue to work here in the spring and in the summer. And uh, you're right, it should be a, a great uh, season on the hardwood for the men's and women's basketball team. It's going to be a lot of excitement to watch Bulldog Volleyball in the new Bulldog Arena playing uh, for real in the fall. So that's going to be exciting as well. We'll take a quick 60-second break as they line it up for the field goal competition. We'll be back after this timeout right here on Sunny 97.3. Somebody once said life moves pretty fast, and that's exactly how we like it. Want to build something? Great. Start businesses, build bridges, raise a whole city. 
future in fighting crime, want to save lives, do it all here. But you've got to go forward fast. Because today is now, and tomorrow is soon. And to get ahead of the game, you've got to get ahead of your time. This is your future, so take it and move all of us forward. Top Tiger Field, live coverage of Ferris State football in the Crimson and Gold Spring game. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you, where the white team leads the red team 26 to 21 here at halftime. And it looks like we're going to have our uh, ever exciting field goal competition coming up between uh, the Ferris State men's basketball team, I believe Bulldog Soccer. Last year it was Bulldog Soccer knocking off the men's basketball team. And I think men's basketball looks like it's going to start it uh, right here. I think that's Jimmy Schola right there, uh, point guard here for the Men's basketball team may be uh, the first attempt coming up here with uh, the ball spotted right about the 10-yard line. So make this about a 20-yard try. Ooh. Add the distance. Uh, and, uh, not sure if it went through or not. Uh, no uh, officials down there to signal it out for us. but <laughs> They're saying no good right there. So another opportunity here now is women's soccer will move next here is Eddie Jewett, uh, the guy spotting the, the football, trying to provide a little bit of direction. Uh, here we'll see if uh, he can coach up uh, these kickers. And women's soccer may not need any uh, help right there as that one goes right through the uprights. I tell you what, they look like they've been there before. So a couple other uh, individuals here as men's basketball will move back uh, here in a uh, second attempt here as this one uh, up and through here oh. as men's basketball. Uh, the straight on kick. Puts one through. Coach Bronco down in the middle here, uh, doing a little bit of filming here with his camera here and see if his team could find a way to get the win. Of course, uh, he's had a tough week already, lost the Special Olympics basketball game by one point uh, the other night, but an outstanding uh, event put on by the Sports Communication Program and the Sports Careers RSO here at Ferris State. Yeah, Coach Brockman was really competitive for that. Uh, you can see uh, the competitiveness does not end with the end of basketball season, just kind of keeps going for Coach Brockman. Jordan Brooks uh, here, going to get the attempt here, freshman on the men's basketball team, and this one uh, up and through as well, had uh, the distance. Uh, uh, well. Oh. In any case, uh, spirited competition uh, to get a little more exciting as they start to move back here, and uh, they start to uh, eliminate perhaps a few contestants here, as uh, that one uh, called good here by, I think Coach Rock down on the field uh, signaling that one was good. Well, women's soccer team is just like a machine right now. It's like uh, they just this is just what they do. They've got an exciting season uh, coming up this fall as well, and uh, going to be exciting to kick off. We mentioned Bulldog football August 31st right here at Top Tiger Field. Women's soccer oh. uh, going to be at home as well the same day. Uh, Bulldog volleyball hosting the annual Ferris State Invitational. Going to play in Bulldog Arena for the first time coming up uh, September 1st and 2nd, I believe, that tournament uh, here to open the season. So all three teams in action here at home uh, on opening weekend this coming fall. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic uh, just to really open that arena officially uh, with some regular season games and to really get a feel for that arena in some, some real competition. And, and uh, that Invitational has typically had some really good competition. The Ferris State uh, mm. softball team, of course, plays its final two home games. Coming up next Friday is the Bulldogs host Wayne State at the FSU softball field. Three and five o'clock starts for senior day as the Bulldogs uh, wrap up their home schedule under head coach Jake Schumann in his first year. And right now a team that's uh, getting better and better as the year goes on. Uh, hope to be playing their best softball come GLIAC tournament time. Yeah, I got some big games right now to close the regular season, an opportunity to get on a nice roll before they head to Illinois for the GLIAC tournament. And, uh, it's really been uh, fun watching this team continue to grow and, and to get better. They're on the road this weekend and hoping for good weather and some good performances on the road over at uh, Parkside and then coming uh, back to Indiana to play against Purdue Northwest. So hoping for a big weekend. Of course, uh, the Ferris State women's golf team uh, also hoping for a big weekend. They're off to a great start today at the GLIAC Championships. 36 holes a stroke play today with the top four teams moving on to the semifinals in the GLIAC Championships tomorrow. The Bulldogs currently sitting second overall at minus seven for the day, trailing just Wayne State by three strokes. And the Bulldogs, uh, you look at it, uh, they're minus seven in second place, Grand Valley State in third, but they're plus 20. So Bulldogs have had an outstanding day so far on the links uh, down in Augusta, Michigan, and hoping to move to the semifinals as the men did last weekend. Yeah, just some great numbers right there. and. Uh, 
Boy, this is the time where you want to be playing at your best, and golf doing well right now. Of course, uh, the competition continues moving back uh, here as they're all the way back near the 20-yard line. And another opportunity here for men's basketball. That one's going to be well short uh, here. Not quite enough on that kick try. Bulldog men's tennis captured the GLIAC regular season championship. They're the number one seed for the conference tournament. Earned a first round bye, and they'll hit the courts tomorrow morning in Midland, needing a couple wins to win the GLIAC tournament championship as well. So it's going to be uh, hoping for some good luck there and uh, hoping for a big uh, performance over in Midland there as uh, this, uh, this longer distance right now is certainly going to take a toll here. Of course, women's soccer uh, not uh, – too unfamiliar uh, with playing in the elements. Uh, fortunately, no elements here today, but uh, they had some <laughs> outstanding uh, success last year during postseason play and some tough uh, conditions on the road. We mentioned it playing out in Bemidji, Minnesota, and they have just won the competition, been declared the winners uh, here, I believe, by Coach Rock down on the field. So great job right here. Maybe, uh, let's see here, one more kick maybe? We'll wait and see. It looks like uh, they may move them back just a little bit and one more opportunity here. At the ball right at the 25-yard line, a 35-yard try, and that was got the distance. Mm. And uh, maybe a little uh, outside, but uh, certainly had the distance here from uh, their first try here at this distance. Got to get another shot at it right here, lefty kicker. This one's got the distance as well, and it's up and good. Count the P or the field goal right there uh, here for the women's soccer team, and we'll see uh, if they uh, continue to move them back here. They've still got a few kickers left here in the competition. That oh, one hits crossbar. Off, hits off the crossbar here and just missed. Uh, Coach Sugar's down there on the field. He's got some great young kickers, but uh, he may be scouting a few more out here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he uh, he's looking right now. I think uh, Coach Sugar's might be taking some uh, mental notes right here to see uh, just the, if he has to press somebody into duty here from one of these other teams. Coach Bronco's team uh, suffering the, the setback here in this competition for the second year in a row. They – May need to find a, a new team to contend with women's soccer here uh, next year as uh, they've been the clear-cut winners uh, here over the past couple of years. Yeah, this one up, just a little wide to the right there. They moved them um, all the way back to the 30 and just a little bit short here as uh, looks like that uh, uh, may wrap up our, our field goal competition. Uh, they've still got the obstacle course set up uh, back to the south end now, so we have yet to uh, uh, really uh, – Get ready for that here is Jimmy uh, Scholler oh, drills one. Oh, oh. We may have another uh, recount here, a revote, uh, as uh, Jimmy just drilled one uh, with the ball at the 30-yard line. Jimmy might be looking for uh, Coach Anise right now to say, hey, uh, if you need somebody, let me know. So uh, that uh, certainly gives uh, some life uh, here to men's basketball and uh, gives them some pride here in the <laughs> competition against women's soccer. Uh, great competition between those two programs. and. Obviously, two coaches that have done uh, great things with their own respective programs. They really have, and uh, are just part of that tradition of excellence in Bulldog athletics and uh, a couple of prideful teams right there and teams that have uh, really a history of success, uh, kind of having some fun competition out here today. We'll take a 60-second break, back with more halftime coverage after this timeout right here on Sunny 97.3. Bigger than any box score. Local Want to be a storyteller? The television and digital media production program at Ferris State University is the create space for you. At Ferris, you will apply creative and technical skills to create stories worth telling. You will be immersed in your learning. You will practice every part of the production process. You will create in state-of-the-art facilities with the latest equipment and software. The TDMP program at Ferris State. Learn to make storytelling your career. Find out more at ferris.edu slash TDMP. It's not easy being an athlete. At Ferris, we do things others will not. We push boundaries. We get up when we fall, again and again. We put in long hours. We don't quit. We do what it takes. That is why we are champions.
get set here for this event. Uh, that'll be followed by a, a chance to introduce uh, some of our Ferris State football signees from National Signing Day uh, before we start the second half. That'll be done uh, down here uh, near midfield here. And then, obviously, uh, the second half will be played. A couple special presentations at the end of the third quarter. And uh, that'll do it here for this Crimson and Gold spring game. Uh, looking out at the north end zone, of course, uh, new premium seating area. You can contact Cedric Frierson. Uh, log on to FerrisStateBulldogs.com to find out more. But a great crowd uh, on hand down in the tent here in the north end zone. And uh, going to be a, a special place to, to watch the Bulldog football this fall. We hope to have uh, some more tents uh, down there and some more premium seating areas, up to 10 people uh, for each of those areas uh, to kind of complement uh, the doghouse, the gridiron club seating, and some of the other uh, things that take place here on game day. Well, just so many different ways that uh... – opportunities to, to get up close and personal or, uh, at, or certainly up closer to Bulldog football. And that's going to be a, that's going to be a great spot, you know, especially you think about wanting to be down there kicking off the season for that Thursday night game. That's going to be a great spot on Thursday night. Of course, uh, great not only for your family, maybe your business, uh, somebody that wants to come out uh, here to Top Tiger Field with a group of people and have a chance to watch the back-to-back -back national champions in action. You can also join the Gridiron Club. A reminder of the membership drive underway after a record-breaking year this past fall. Don't miss out. You can visit FerrisStateBulldogs.com to find out more as uh, membership's currently being taken for the 2023 season. The Ferris State football golf outing coming your way on Saturday, June 24th at Clear Lake Golf Club, uh, chaired by Bill Shibley, who has done an outstanding job with that event for so many years. Uh, always uh, a near sellout, if not sold out, for that golf outing at Clear Lake. Uh, in fact, last year they had to move some golfers to other courses <laughs> as uh, it was oversold. So uh, expecting a great crowd, hopefully great weather, and more details on that event coming soon. Well, stick your claim early if you're planning on it. The Bulldogs uh, also have season tickets on sale here. An early bird special during the month of April. Receive a back-to-back -back national championship beanie uh, with the purchase of a season ticket for the 2023 season. You can log on to FerroStateBulldogs.com. Click on the splash page information to find out more on season tickets here for Ferro State football. Home opener set for Thursday, August 31st against Mercyhurst right here under the lights at Top Tiger Field. We've got... Uh, Action all over the field right now, uh, an obstacle course as we've got the tackling dummies out there. Uh, the, the large ball is right about the 30. We've got a net uh, here uh, along with uh, some other uh, events taking place uh, here with the pylons out on the field uh, here on the south end. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how uh, this obstacle course uh, takes place. Uh, they, they put a lot of work into the setup of this one. Yeah, it looks good. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to play out here. It looks like they're getting the pieces in place right here and uh, I think we're looks like we might be getting pretty close here to, to seeing how this uh, obstacle course is going to play out. Looks like uh, the seven footer Nate Clairbout is going to lead it off uh, for the men's basketball team over on that far side. I think he's uh, kind of squaring off against Chloe Idoni, uh, academic All-American oh. here for the Ferris State women's basketball team as they, they both hit the tackling dummies. Oh, we got like a relay going here. It is relay uh, competition here as they uh, kind of maneuver the a large ball here uh, out near midfield. They'll toss it over to another teammate here for the throw into the net. And the men's basketball squad, maybe a little bit of an early lead here. Is yeah, this is going to be the tough one right here, hitting that spot on the net. I think they're teamed up uh, with some other athletes as well as uh, they get it down to the pylon. And uh, we'll have to wait and see if uh, that's the end of it or not. Do they have to go back? Uh, as, oh, uh, got it. Reese Hazelton going uh, around the pylon. Uh, a bunch of times here at the 10-yard line. Don't fall down, Reese. He's going to get a little dizzy here as uh, women's basketball uh, getting it up the near sideline along with athletes from some other teams as Reese kind of stumbling <laughs> to the end zone here and finds his way to pay dirt. Oh! Uh, but not able to catch the football in the end zone. So apparently that was part of it as well. And the team on the near side. Oh, what a comeback. Comeback victory here uh, led uh, from the start by – Members of the women's basketball team, so they got to get the win here uh, in our uh, obstacle course uh, relay competition uh, here at Top Tiger Field. Is uh, I'll uh, get all the uh, accessories off the field here before we can uh, introduce uh, members of our national signing day class, and then obviously get ready for the second half of football. Yeah, great competition right there, and uh, I'd be excited to have the names of these future Bulldogs called out here as uh, 
their era gets ready to begin. And, uh, boy, it's going to be an exciting time for them. They will uh, walk over here to the near sideline here as uh, they get organized. We'll read off uh, each member of the National Signing Day class and uh, get them an opportunity uh, here to be uh, welcomed by the uh, fans here at Top Taggart Field as they're on the uh, – near sideline here and we'll walk out when uh, we, we call their names. Some of them in attendance, some of them are not, but uh, we'll read all the names uh, here. Uh, Derek Anderson, a linebacker from Trenton, Michigan. Also uh, here, another uh, member of the signing class as uh, it looks like uh, they're down uh, here on the near side, so we uh, may uh, scratch this, it looks like. Uh, not able to get enough of them uh, organized here, so uh, we do congratulate all the members of the National Signing Day class uh, here at Top Taggart Field. So uh, maybe an opportunity to do that later. But it looks like back to football now here as we start this uh, third quarter of play with the score 27 to 21. Looks like we're ready for kickoff here to get the second half going. So it will be Middleton uh, with the ball on the tee, kicking uh, from the south end here at Top Taggart Field to start off this second half of play. Nice first half of action here between uh, these two teams here in the Crimson and Gold Spring game is this Ooh, one driven kickoff. all the way through the end zone and uh, out into the special seating area where the tent uh, is in the north end zone. So a great kick by Mitch Middleton uh, here. Uh, he saw some action last year as the kickoff man for the Bulldogs. He did right there and showed a good little leg right there to boot that deep. And uh, showing uh, Bulldogs, uh, again, special teams has been a big area of growth for this program uh, over the years and uh, just continues to get better and better. Uh, certainly something that uh, Coach Anise and the staff have really focused on over the years. So the white team going to start with the football here as they come out at the 25-yard line. Sunny skies here for a uh, Friday evening of action as uh, the Bulldogs wrap up spring football drills here uh, with their 14th or 15th workout of the spring here at Top Taggart Field. And a chance to wrap it up here as uh, – we will introduce members of the 2023 class coming up at the end of the third quarter as part of some other presentations we have here at the end of the third period. So uh, trips to the right side here in the formation as the white team sets up in a four-receiver set off the left side hash. And the give here to the near side. And oh, a great nice defense. open field tackle here by the red team. And coming up to make the stop was Jerome Baker wearing the number 20 jersey. Well, that was speed on speed right there. Great job there by... Rowan Baker to get to that edge right there and that speed matchup there. And again, that Bulldog defensive speed, we've seen that so often. Saw that last year in that great run in the playoffs. That was Trent Hill on the carry, uh, number 27 for the white team, who uh, was a redshirt freshman this past fall for the Bulldogs. Had a great high school career and a talented tailback here. Another young player here in this Ferris State program. Two to the left side here. One back to the near side on the short side hash as they work against a four-man front here off the right side. Chambliss looking to throw to the outside. Hooks up over on that far sideline and in the red team territory as they move the football here on the long pass play. Yeah, that's a great job. Great adjustment there to be able to come up with that ball, track that ball, and looking at the replay right now on Ferris Television. Great job there on the fake and Good job tracking the ball, coming back to getting it, and then yards after the catch. Tariq Brett on the reception here for the white team as they move it into red team territory down to the 44-yard line as they uh, take a 29-21 to 21 lead here on the scoreboard. 10.40 to play uh, here in this third period of action as the white team will line up over the football. Looks like Jarvis Windham, uh, the center here, right in the center of that offensive line here for the white team as Chambliss will work out of the gun. Tight set here for the white squad off the left side hash as they send a man back in motion here to the wide side. Chambliss to throw here out of the backfield and hooks up here and a big play here as they get it down inside the 30 before uh, the red defense collapses in on the tackle but move the chains again here for the white squad. Yeah, great job right there turning one of those uh, short pass plays and we saw that right there, a little quick out there. Good blocking off the edge and Bulldogs of course known for great blocking by the receivers on the outside, helping to get those yards after the catch. So the white team uh, with the football down to the 27-yard line here in what will be a first and 10 situation here for the white squad. After the throw from Chambliss, he's completed back-to-back -back passes here for the white team, and they have a 10-point lead here in the contest. Yeah, he's looked good. Uh, he's looked good throughout the spring. They got a receiver out to the far side in Bryson Frana. 
And one back to the near side in Housie uh, here for the white team. As low snap, oh, Chambliss out. trying to pick it up. Hill will pick it up, and pressure came as they collapse him here for the tackle for the loss in the backfield. The defense on the step, Marquis Jones making the hit in the backfield. Good job there getting in there, and uh, you got to – Big thing is to recover that football and uh, make sure you hang on to it and knowing that the big fella's coming to put the hit on. Siobhan Ruffin will check in here on the defensive line as they rotate some bodies here, an opportunity to get uh, a lot of guys here on both teams some playing time uh, here over the course of the afternoon. Of course, a lot of guys that were key members of that national title team last fall, not uh, seeing action here today. Most of them in uniform, but not all of them seeing action here this afternoon. Want to prevent some injuries and obviously a, a chance to see what some of these other guys can do in a game like situation. Chambliss with the option pitch to Hill left side. He turns back up field and gets some yardage here back and all the way down uh, here to the 24 yard line. So uh, a little more manageable uh, distance coming up here on the next down. Yeah, great job there on the speed, uh, speed toss right there as uh, they were able to Try to try to get ahead of the defense right there a little bit, and you can see quick, uh, just a little sprint out right there, and a quick toss to the edge, and you try to get just outside of that edge and get a little run upfield. A reminder for ticket scores, merchandise, video, and more. You can log on to FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Eight minutes left here in the third quarter, 31-21 our score. Here is Chambliss will work out of the shotgun set. Trips right with one man to the left here in the four receiver set. He's got Hill to the left, motioning out. Here are the offensive backfield, empty backfield here for Chambliss. Working out of the gun, back to throw here to the outside. It hooks up over on that far sideline as Housie makes the grab here and a little extracurricular activity here as he gets enough yardage here for the first down of the 15. Little wrestling match over there on the outside, but uh, great job, again, tracking the ball on the outside and being able to put it in. Jeremiah Housie again. Nice job, good protection, good throw again by Chambliss. Look at uh, the wide receiver position. He's another young guy. We mentioned Cam Underwood, uh, Kalen Murphy. There's a lot of young guys. Those receiver spots, uh, obviously the Bulldogs going to be aided by the return. Uh, Tyrese Hunt-Thompson, Xavier Wade this coming year. So really good depth at the wide receiver position, along with the slot positions here for Ferris State. Yeah, Bulldogs going to have a lot of options right there for opponents to think about. Chambliss in the gun with Hill to the left side here offensively inside of seven minutes to go. And in motion here as they fake the give. Chambliss across the middle and trying to hook up with Housie uh, right in the end zone here. And that one just off target here as they'll get another chance here with second and ten coming up. Yeah, pretty solid job right there defensively there. You try to sell that outside and then cut back inside. And ball uh, maybe just a little bit leading him there as Housie trying to extend to be able to pull that one in. Ferro State 14-1 this past fall. Of course, beat the Colorado School of Mines 41-14 in the national title game in McKinney, Texas. And we were part of that trip. Obviously, an outstanding experience for the Bulldogs. And makes it even better when you, you can go there, you can do it twice and win it in back-to-back -back years. Yeah, it's just something you never take for granted because of the amount of work that goes into it. And then to come out of Super Region 3, our region, and to run that gauntlet to get there, I mean, that just makes it all the more sweeter. Give right up the middle here behind Good that run. offensive line. And nice job by the white team of really opening up some holes on that offensive line. Led inside Devin Runnels uh, along with Timothy Anderson and some other guys on that offensive line as we read a few numbers. Yeah, Good strong inside run right there. Just uh, kind of working through uh, some tight cracks there to get uh, some good yardage as Trent Hill. Solid run. See what the red team could do here defensively as uh, they trail 32-21. to 21. Here with 5.34 to go here in this third quarter of action. We'll welcome all the Ferris State football alums uh, here in attendance today coming up at the end of the third quarter. So be down on the field here with a chance to honor some of those former Bulldog standouts. Uh, give up the middle here and uh, another nice pickup here for Hill as he's going to have the first down down inside the five and approaching the end zone here at Top Taggart Field. We'll also have a special presentation from the Woodbridge Ferris family coming up here at the end of the third quarter. Try to announce those uh, members of the recruiting class as well. So all uh, should report down uh, here near the 50-yard line here at Top Tiger Field uh, coming up here for the end of the third quarter. Yeah, that was another good run there by Hill. Great job by the offensive line, too, to get some push right there, especially up the middle. So great job all the way around Bulldogs executing that running game, and we know how big that is for this Bulldog offense. So out of the gun here, Chambliss will set it up here with – Hill to his left here on the offensive backfield. 
Chambliss will send a man in motion uh, here. H back to the left side. They give it off to Hill, off left tackle, to the end zone. Did he get in? Still no signal here, and I think he's going to be marked just shy here. Is did not see a signal from the officials, and it looks like it's going to be spotted here, maybe about the one-yard line. Yeah, it's going to be uh, probably not a whole lot of space between the nose of the football and the goal line. So uh, close to a touchdown right there as the white team will huddle back up, and they're smelling end zone here with a 33-21 to 21 lead here late in this third period of action. Ferris State football screen, spring game here at Top Taggart Field. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you as Ferris State, uh, the white team will line up here off the left side hash. Two receivers to the left side. Hill to the left side here at Chambliss. Working out of the shotgun set. They'll give it off to Hill again. Touchdown, Bulldogs, as Hill rambles in here on the one-yard touchdown run. And that'll extend the lead here for the white squad. Great finish right there. Great execution on the goal line right there. Bulldogs had a big goal line touchdown against Saginaw Valley on the road. And nice job executing their good, strong run again by the Bulldogs to punch that one in. Of course, the white team, I believe, uh, the coach for the white team, our honorary coach, uh, Ace Edwards, Austin Edwards, uh, he must have had a few words uh, for his team at halftime <laughs> as they have uh, really came out strong here in this third quarter of play. You got to bottle up that halftime speech right there and be able to use that one over and over again as the uh, extra point up and good, and the white team starting to open it up here. So Jewett able to finish right there with 2.55 to go. Clock still moving here in the third, and the score is extended here to 40-21. to 21 here at the Crimson and Gold Spring Game at Top Taggart Field. Ferris State football wrapping up spring drills. Of course, uh, next week, uh, following uh, uh, final week of classes here, it'll be finals week and graduation just a couple weeks away here for uh, many of the uh, graduating student athletes here at Ferris State and some Bulldog football seniors graduating as well. So uh, hoping to finish off the semester here in strong fashion. Yeah, we know graduation is obviously very, very important. You know, we were down in Texas uh, and we had uh, some Bulldogs that graduated in December and uh, they had their cap and gown and got some photos and uh, it's a big uh, culmination of their their academic careers and a huge part of their lives and obviously football is big but certainly graduating and going to be a lot of uh, pride on May 5th and May 6th as our Bulldog student athletes as well as our other Bulldog students who are graduating get an opportunity to walk across that stage and uh, you know get a chance to uh, meet with President Pink and uh, the other uh, top administrators and uh, as well as the Board of Trustees and to, to be able to get uh, that, uh, that piece of paper that uh, says that they are officially a graduate of Ferris State University. Of course, uh, the Bulldogs, a number of individuals named to the GLIAC All-Academic Team, the GLIAC All-Academic Excellence Team this past fall on the football side. And uh, Ferris State also had a GLIAC Commissioner's Award recipient for the second time, also named an Academic All-American, LaRae Oladipo on the defensive line. So Caleb Murphy, uh, obviously uh, a standout player on the defensive line, but uh, Oladipo was pretty good as well and uh, did it in the classroom as well here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Oladipo was an outstanding player and, uh, you know, just a tremendous uh, student athlete, great example of a student athlete. Bulldogs will set a man in motion here as the red team gets the football back. Just over a minute left here in the third as uh, they give it off and not a whole lot of room to run here as uh, they go a little bit deeper uh, here down the depth chart at quarterback and uh, we'll see what they can do here as we approach the end of this third period. Yeah, that white team defensive front, they're starting to feel pretty good right now. Is a uh, good job getting off the ball right there and kind of swarming to the ball and making the tackle in the backfield. Michael Martin L on a quarterback here for the red team. As uh, the red team, three quarterbacks deep here today. The white team's played a, a couple different guys at quarterback as well. And uh, that's five quarterbacks we've already seen here. And uh, we haven't, uh, of course, seen Malik Mitchell uh, here, not in uniform here today, but uh, expected to be a big contributor again here for the Bulldogs, one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Absolutely. Uh, just uh, quite the gunslinger, throws that great ball. And, you know, he's going to be excited to be able to return here as a uh, little keeper there and run. But the, this white team defense is fired up right now. Michael Martin L on the carry is uh, the stop was made right near the line of scrimmage. Good hit by C.J. Jones. First man there to kind of stand him up here off the right side and loss of some yardage here as we end this third quarter of play. It's the white team in front, 40 to 21. We'll take a quick 30 second timeout back uh, with some special presentations after this break here on Sunny 97.3.
Amir Ashwood. Defensive back from Belleville, Joshua Beasley. Also on hand, a defensive lineman from Freeland, Gabe Blanchard. An offensive lineman from McBain, Mac Bonico. Wide receiver from Grand Blanc, Tay Boyd. Also a wide receiver from Springfield, Ohio, Dalen Bradley. With another uh, individual who was part of the National Signing Day class, defensive back from Detroit, Loyola, Dwight Bush. Quarterback from Orlando, Florida, Chase Carter. Linebacker from Hollywood, Florida, Christian Kramer. A defensive tackle from Waterbleet, Royce Doherty. Defensive back from Jacksonville, Florida, C.J. Dorsey. From Taylor, Michigan, a defensive lineman, Laurent Donamu. Out of Hudsonville, a tight end and long snapper, Mason Dykstra. A linebacker from Largo, Florida, Jerick Fields. From Ottawa Hills High School, a running back, Kimarian Gibson. An offensive lineman from Orlando, Florida, Dejan Gilbert. Defensive back from River Rouge, Lamont Gordon. A running back from Brownstone, Michigan, Devin Henry. A linebacker from Bad Axe, Jake McPhee. From Detroit Edison, first the defensive lineman, Derek Matlock II. And also an athlete from Detroit Edison, Mikkel McClure. Quarterback from Detroit Cast Tech, LaShawn Mumfield. A slot receiver from Clearwater, Florida, Tim Ormond. A defensive lineman from Grand Rapids South Christian, Cam Post. An offensive lineman from Gibraltar, Ben Pristula. From Cadillac, linebacker Chris Reinhold. Defensive back from Miramar, Florida, Trey Rigby. A slot receiver from Venice, Florida, Keon Sears. Also part of this signing day class, defensive back from Detroit Cast Tech, Javen Sewell. A wide receiver from Battle Creek, Lorenz Smith. Defensive back from Benton Harbor, Deviante Tasker. A wide receiver from Flint Beecher, Jalen Townsend. Also a wide receiver from Muskegon Motor Shores, Jalen Benton. From Florida, defensive back, Alston Ware. And a defensive back from Venice, Florida, Jaquavius Washington. I'd like to welcome members of our 2023 National Signing Day recruiting class for the Ferris State Bulldogs to Top Tiger Field. <laughs> Sandy, another outstanding class of incoming recruits here for the Bulldogs. Uh, this group, along with some other walk-ons uh, in attendance here today and some other kids uh, that will join the class and looking forward to continuing that Ferris State football tradition. Yeah, obviously the, the recruiting class has just uh, grown and it's going to continue to grow. And uh, you see a lot of smiles out there as they get their photo taken with uh, Coach Anise. And, uh, yet uh, they, these guys are ready to, to roll up the sleeves and get to work. And a lot of talent out there on the field, young talent right here, ready to put on those Bulldog colors and uh, – and get here on campus. A lot of them already have on some Bulldog colors, so looking forward to the future of Bulldog football. I'd like to remind all former players, all alumni uh, here in attendance today to walk down to Top Taggart Field and a chance to get introduced uh, here uh, as we uh, introduce some of our former alums uh, coming up here shortly. But first, it looks like we'll have uh, another special presentation as some of those alums make their way down to the field and uh, as a, before we get this uh, fourth quarter underway today, on behalf of our founder, Woodbridge Ferris and Helen Ferris, their great-great-granddaughter, Tammy Ferris-Smith, would like to honor the Bulldogs National Championship team and head coach Tony Anise with a special national championship trophy replicating the Bulldogs championship ring from the Ferris family. The Ferris family would like to thank uh, Coach Anise and the Bulldogs for supporting the mission of Woodbridge Ferris and achieving the ultimate goal for the second consecutive year. With uh, Coach Anise today, Athletic Director Steve Brocklebank and Tammy Ferris-Smith, congrats on behalf of the Ferris family. Outstanding tribute here to Ferris State football from 
the Woodbridge Ferris family, and uh, nice to see uh, that support uh, really continue for so many generations. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, going back to the founding of this university in 1884 and the, the Ferris family remaining connected, and they really, truly are remaining connected. And so uh, we're just really grateful. And uh, I saw a picture of that uh, – that trophy uh, replica ring, and it is pretty sweet. So if you get a chance to take a look at that, it is pretty awesome. Got some Bulldog football alums making their way uh, down to Top Taggart Field here today, and uh, many other alums, uh, I'm sure, in attendance as well, or those uh, watching uh, around the world here as they'll huddle up uh, at midfield. Big thank you to all the alums in attendance here today as they take a picture with head coach Tony Anise and members of the Ferris State football family, the Bulldogs uh, with players uh, going all the way back to the Coach Bob Leach era, players from the Nick Coso era, Keith Otterbein, of course, who had so much success at Ferris State from the mid-'80s to the mid-'90s, Coach Jeff Pierce from 1995 to 2011, and uh, many of the guys down there uh, here uh, played for Coach Anise uh, here since 2012. So some outstanding ambassadors and uh, one of the greatest uh, alumni groups you'll find anywhere in the country. Oh, yeah, they are an engaged alumni group, and, and they just – the success that this program's having right now, you see some hugs down there. Uh, the success that this program is having right now, built on the shoulders of these alumni that came before. And uh, these alumni, they want to see this thing continue. They want to see this thing get better and better. And we talked about, you know, I remember alumni from my era when I was a student going back in the early 90s and, you know, getting here when uh, Keith Otterbein was still coaching and then when Jeff Pierce was starting to coach here and uh, as a head coach, he had been here as an assistant. And uh, just that tradition just continues. Uh, and, uh, so many of those alumni that played in those eras, they are loving what they're seeing in this current program. Thank you again to all the special guests we had on the field here between quarters. And congratulations again uh, here to the 2022 NCAA Division II National Champion Ferris State Bulldogs. Some of those Bulldog alums out there at midfield were some guys that uh, are recent alums and graduates. So, so Adam Seeler, we mentioned Larray Oladipo and uh, some other guys uh, here that uh, were, were part of that uh, special presentation here at midfield. Uh, some guys that uh, really made an impact here on Ferris State football as we start this fourth quarter of action. Long throw down field here. Oh. And they were trying to turn it back in here as the white team uh, right now leads it 40 to 21. That an incomplete pass here to start this fourth quarter of play. Trying to hit that back shoulder right there and make the adjustment to get to the ball. Just couldn't quite get there as uh, – Red team comes out gunning. Well, of course, uh, have uh, our post-game show coming up here on Sunday 97.3 when it's all said and done. A chance to wrap it up. Maybe a few comments uh, here when this one's all said and done. Uh, as uh, Ferro State gears up uh, following this game for, of course, uh, fall camp starting here in early August. Uh, the season begins August 31st. Won't be long. Uh, before you know it, we'll be right back out here uh, as camp <laughs> gets underway here in early August. I tell you what, you can't wait. Uh, you're right, though. Uh, we're going to be uh, counting down the days here once we get through spring practice and we start to think about what it's going to be like here in August and that August heat. And tell you what, it's not going to be any better place to be than to, to come out here and to be able to take in some Bulldog football practice. And the only thing that's going to be better than that is when we kick off the regular season against Mercyhurst right here at Top Tagger Field. Of course, the Bulldogs hosted Mercyhurst then on the road back-to-back -back weeks, September 9th at Ashland, September 16th at Montana before an open week on September 23rd. Uh, Part of the uh, uh, things going on around Division II football, tough to find opponents, and the Bulldogs uh, tried hard to find an opponent for September 23rd. That is an open date right now, but uh, good opportunity after a couple tough road games uh, before they really gear up for GLIAC play, back-to-back -back home games against Northern Michigan for homecoming in Saginaw Valley State on October 7th. Yeah, homecoming is going to be big. Uh, it always is big, and to close out that month, and you know, it's going to be uh, hopefully a, a rested Bulldog team uh, looking to uh, keep the good times rolling. We'll have all the game times uh, set here soon and announced uh, here uh, in the near future at FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Is short throw here, and it uh, looks like uh, another change in quarterback. Charlie Spencer starts the fourth here for the white team wearing the number 25 jersey. So uh, the Bulldogs, uh, good stable of quarterbacks and uh, good stable so much that they've got guys wearing 24 and 25 uh, here in the spring game. <laughs> that's a that's a good uh, that's a good problem to have here is. Uh, Get a chance to see as many people as possible here as this uh, clock continues to run here in the fourth quarter and uh, opportunities here to just kind of clear the books here a little bit, get everybody in and get a chance to make some evaluations. High scoring game so far, 43 to 21. The white team leads it here in this modified scoring format as Spencer will work out of the shotgun set. Man in motion here as they sweep it over on the right side. Barrett to the outside here trying to turn up field and 
Gets it out near the 45 yard line, maybe the 46 or 47 good spot over there on that white sideline. The red team right now looking to see if they can get a takeaway here to try to get some momentum back going again here on the scoreboard. You get a takeaway and a touchdown and you're right back in the ball game here with nine minutes to play, but uh, starts uh, here defensively if they can slow up this white team. Xavier Wade in the huddle, I think uh, we're on the red jersey with the white unit, maybe trying to get some secrets uh, here to help out his team. He might be uh, here, could be a spy right there, checking it out. Uh, you know, he'd love to be out there uh, grabbing that football here. Very talented player and what a great addition he's gonna be having him back in the lineup in the fall. The white team will start here off the right side hash. Twins right with two back to the left side of the formation. Here is, they line it up here in the shotgun set. Into the left side here is Spencer in the gun as he takes his time here at the controls with 8.30 to play here in this fourth period of action. Set a man back in motion. He fakes the give, looking to throw deep downfield. Got a man. He's got a man, oh. but uh, not able to connect over on that right side down inside the 20-yard line. He's trying to hook up on that far sideline, so an incompletion here for the white team. Boy, had a good shot right there. Had a little bit of separation right there. Just couldn't make the connection. That was intended for Housie. He's got a lot of reps here today, as has Tariq Brett, some of the other skill position guys. Bulldogs holding a number of guys out of the contest here. Of course, Brady Rose had a great finish uh, to his freshman season for the Bulldogs, was a huge uh, playmaker in that national championship game, not in uniform here today in the slot for the Bulldogs. We mentioned C.J. Jefferson uh, seeing some action at defensive back, not in uniform here today as well. So some uh, key guys uh, here that the Bulldogs will be counting on uh, here when the fall season rolls around. This one high in the air here and uh, going to be fielded back inside the 20. It's Deion Small back there for the red team. Uh, not really seeing any action here on offense, but uh, is doing some special teams work here today for the red unit. Going to be uh, one of those dangerous return men uh, here coming this fall for the Bulldogs. Uh, he is. and, and just a, a, You'd like to have those game breakers back there, guys that can potentially uh, take it the distance there and make teams pay for special teams uh, mistakes or lack of execution. And so I'd like to have those game breakers. Approaching the seven o'clock hour, you're in tune to Ferris State football, the Crimson and Gold spring game here from Top Tiger Field. Rob Bentley and Sandy Golston with you. Inside of seven minutes left, 43-24 our score. Here the white team leads the red with the ball spotted here back at the 18 yard line. That's where the red unit will start. They've got a lot of field to work with, but a chance to pile up some points uh, when you think you can get uh, points for a first down for a 10 plus yard play and obviously for a touchdown they, they need some points uh, here in this final seven minutes. Certainly would love to get some explosive plays right now we'll see how much they open up the playbook here. They've got twins to the left side a man back to the right keeper here off the left side for Zach Ahern back at quarterback here for the red unit lowers the shoulder and picks up a good uh, six or seven yards here on the carry shades of Jason Vanderlaan at the controls uh, right there uh, here for the Rockford Dady. Tell you what, he learned from uh, one of the best right there is uh, certainly following that lead. Good physical run right there by Zach right there as he uh, kind of held the ball just a little bit, try to freeze the defense, and boy, he's not afraid to put that shoulder down and take that contact. Think of some of the records that have been broken here for the Bulldogs on a national level. Jason uh, with more rushing yards for a quarterback than any player in college football history. Last fall, Caleb Murphy, more sacks in a single season, more tackles for loss than any player in the history of the game. Yeah, I tell you what, just you mentioned just some great, great players and uh, making some great plays on the big stage and, and garnering attention. Uh, when you start to garner the attention of those NFL scouts, I mean, that tells you that you are doing some big things. Bulldogs have started to establish that tradition. Of course, uh, first draft pick in NFL history from Ferris State, Zach Sealer. Uh, back in 2018, and obviously uh, some guys hoping to follow in his footsteps, and including his uh, younger brother Adam Seeler, uh, obviously Caleb Murphy as well. So Bulldogs really have uh, kind of decided uh, or, or uh, been able to kind of establish that pipeline. Uh, a lot of scouts coming through uh, here each and every year. Yeah, I think uh, once recruits start to see that uh, these guys from Ferris, that not only are they winning, uh, winning championships, but you have an opportunity if, if you can – uh, bring it on the field, in practice, in games, you got an opportunity to get to the next level. Ahern with it uh, here on the left side of the formation here and uh, trying to avoid the rush, but did not have a whole lot of time to work with right there. Good pursuit here by the white team is had a host of jerseys over there uh, to drop him down here back inside the 30-yard line. Push him back a yard there, so it's going to make it at 11 yards right now. As a, Again, trying to see if they can stack up some points right here, and of course, Opportunities here with a first down. 
to uh, pick up a point, as Rob mentioned a little bit earlier. Get an explosive player 10 yards plus. Chance to get some points. A lot of real estate here between here and the end zone. O'Brien lines up in the slot here on the near side, along with, I believe, Darius Pruitt here on the outside for the red team. They've got a man left side as well as Ahern looks to the near side, looking over the top. Oh. He's trying to find Pruitt here on the near sideline, and that one kind of sailed to the right here into the Ferris State sideline, an incomplete pass. You see uh, these guys out here each and every day uh, running so many reps. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, from oh, there. Yeah. Beginning of practice to the end of practice, uh, these guys put in a, a lot of time to really uh, perfect this offense. Yeah, in many ways, before practice even starts, they have like a, a lot of stuff that they do uh, before they officially start practice and start to, to really get into their stretch routine. And so a lot of work that took place here during the spring and uh, spring, the spring season, you see uh, kind of all four uh, weather seasons here is uh, they start uh, in the snow and ice and they end here in relatively good weather here on a Friday night. And so a lot of work taking place, uh, not only on the field, in the weight room, in the classroom, just trying to get better with each day. You mentioned in the weight room, Coach T doing an outstanding job with these guys. A lot of those guys right back in the weight room uh, before the second semester began and obviously helps uh, when you got a beautiful new facility as Zach Ahern breaks a big run right here for the red team. Zach saying, I, uh, I was never down here <laughs> the official linesman coming in saying, nope, uh, we got you down right here at the 45. So That's the still a uh, 10 yards plus. Picks up some big yardage here with 250 to go, but a great new facility, the opening of the new Bulldog Arena, the Center for Athletics Performance, and been a tremendous addition here for Ferris State Athletics. Yeah, it has uh, been a game changer, not only for football, but for all of our sports. And, and uh, we talked about volleyball, the championship success of volleyball, getting the Bulldog Arena, and uh, kind of sacrificing their old arena uh, for the greater good to, to get the Center for Athletics Performance. And, and that's gonna that, that's just a, a huge game changer for uh, all of Bulldog Athletics right here as they try to go up top. A hurt over the top, receiver trying to come back to the football on that far side, and that one ruled incomplete. Uh, no flags on the play right there over on that far sideline as uh, the white team pretty good coverage over there on that far end. Yeah, coming up on the two minute mark here, so the red team kind of running out of time here to see if they can grab some points here. Good pressure actually coming off the edge right there, trying to see if they can rush Zach a little bit. 43-26 our score here with two minutes left. Clock will stop here at the two-minute mark. Coach Anise doing a little more coaching out there here with some of these younger guys uh, here as uh, the second half rolls along. Outstanding evening here for Ferris State football. The Bulldogs, of course, will celebrate the national championship, a chance uh, to honor uh, these players from last fall with a presentation of their national championship rings coming up tomorrow in a special event here on campus. So. A uh, great way to wrap up spring football here as Ahern keeps it here off the left side and in the white team territory here as he crosses the 50-yard line. And Zach, uh, you mentioned it a little bit ago, uh, shades of what the great Jason Vanderlaan did so many times on this field and uh, showing uh, a lot of that in him. And uh, really great to see these young players get an opportunity to shine here as we start to wind down the Crimson and Gold game. Thank you, the quarterbacks the Bulldogs have had under Coach Anise, uh, Trevor Birmingham, Reggie Bell, the list goes on and on. Jay Rue Campbell, obviously Jared Bernhardt, uh, great stable of quarterbacks. Uh, Malik Mitchell, uh, Carson Golker kind of continuing that trend, at least in terms of the guys that uh, saw a lot of action last fall for the Bulldogs. Back to throw here, a hurry rolls out left side here on the move. Dumps it off here as the pass complete here to the 40. Oh, great nice turn back. to the outside here, trying to get a couple blockers down the sideline. And finally knocked out of bounds down inside the 10-yard line. Nice completion there on the pass play. He had the rumble going down the far sideline there, trying to get to the house. So a couple more points right there on the ledger here for the red team as uh, time beginning to tick away here. 108 to go here in the game. So we'll see if the red team can uh, cut into this uh, deficit here in the latter stages here as that uh, trims it to 43 to 28 here and we'll see if they can put some points and get into the end zone here on the board uh, here on this, what could be this final drive here of the ball game. A chance to get up over that 30 point mark right here if they can get into the end zone. I heard of the man to his left side here, twins right with a man to the left here. Three receivers here in the offensive set as he looks back right, looking over the top for Pruitt in the end zone. Oh, was that interception? And we'll nope. wait and see if they're going to rule it incomplete here in the corner of the end zone. Again, good coverage here. Tyler Green on coverage here for the white team. Solid coverage right there. Had the jump ball in the back corner of the end zone. Good job right there getting up and competing for that football. Still 101 left here as the clock will stop here. And uh, they're going to 
try to use every second of the clock here to put some points on the board here for the red team as they try to cut into this margin here, trying to make uh, this final score at least a little bit closer here. Got a competitive spring game again here between the white team and the red team. Yeah, it has. And, uh, you know, you just want to finish on a positive note right here. So, you know, these guys in the, on the red team, they want to punch this one in. They will line up here off the left side hash. Man to the right side here of Ahern in the offensive backfield. Twins out wide here on the right side as he looks again over the got top back corner. He's got O'Brien. Did he haul it in? Yes. Touchdown, Bulldogs! Great job tracking the ball, adjusting and making the grab right there as he was falling down out of bounds. Great job right here. You see the nice little uh, drop there. Drop and cut that ball up in there. Got that good air on it. Nice job to go up there and pull it down. Five seconds to go here as they uh, make it a 23 to 34 ball game. The extra point coming here from Eddie Jewett. He will kick to the south end here. A little bit of a breeze here as we look at the American flag at Top Tiger Field here in the south end zone. And kick is on the way, and the kick is up and good. So able to convert here inside of a minute remaining. It's down to eight here. And uh, we've had a couple great finishes uh, here over the years in the spring game here in recent history. Hey, what, it's setting up right now for potentially a good finish right here. Still 55 seconds to go. That red defense going to be uh, looking for a turnover. Of course, we'll have all the action for you all season long right here on Sunny 97.3. Online coverage at FerrisStateBulldogs.com and our video coverage on Flow Sports this coming fall, courtesy of Ferris State Television in partnership with the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. 55 seconds remain. 43-35 our score. Here is the kick here, an onside kick. And going to be picked <laughs> up here as uh, the white team going to recover. We'll see if... Uh, they give them back the football here. Of course, uh, it was a white player, but uh, I believe it's going to be uh, red football if it stands here, and it'll give them uh, another opportunity. You know, Coach Nice wants another offensive opportunity here with 55 seconds to go. Is That was Brady Rose, uh, actually the kickoff man there that recovered it. Great job on the onside kick right there. Great execution there to be able to recover it here. So don't close the door yet on the red team. We've got... Uh, Chain gain on hand here today. We got the ball crew, the, the Monk brothers running the ball crew here today at Top Tiger Field. So it's a uh, Bulldog football game day uh, here, uh, despite it being the spring game. It does feel like a, a Bulldog football game day right here. A lot of the traditions are alive here in this game. So the red team going to get it here with 55 seconds to go here in the ball game. 43 35. The white team leads it here in this spring game as they try to find a way to come back and get a big win here you know what would be a little bit of an upset with where the score stood but they've only got 55 seconds to work with we'll see how many uh unlimited timeouts so they get uh here with less than a minute remaining uh Hearn will fake the give oh uh, pressure came and he had nowhere to go with it uh right there is uh pressure came from the near side up front and a big play by Cam Moore, the defensive end coming in to make the hit. That white team defense, a lot of pride there. They don't want to see uh, they don't want to see the epic comeback right here. The white team over there on that far sideline, uh, trying to get this defense fired up. As uh, see Austin Edwards over on that far side, you know uh, he wants to hold on and get the win here in this spring game as the honorary uh, coach here today. Out of the gun here for receiver set as uh, Hearn drops back here, has time, looking over the top again for O'Brien, trying to come back to the football, and that one a little bit short here is uh, pretty good coverage here from the white team defensively. It was Eric Jackson on coverage here on the corner here for the white squad. Solid coverage right there, and Bulldogs again really tough on the edges there defensively, and we saw that again. One of the things uh, Bulldog defense last year so good at all three levels, and coverage just one of them right there Bulldogs able to shut down a lot of great offenses 22 seconds left here in the ball game is the red team has the football at its own 44 yard line trailing 43 to 35 here in the spring game is they need a big play here with just 22 seconds left here in the ball game it'll be third and long though third and 15 here is a Hearn uh, facing the pressure from the back side rolls out right side Amari. looking for O'Brien over oh, the top oh, oh, oh. just not able to track it down they had the play set up and Fourth down coming up here with 14 seconds to go. Yeah, just a great job kind of scrambling away there, trying to make something happen there. Zach was uh, 
feeling that pressure right there, so elusive back there. Did a good job of keeping his eyes downfield and nearly making a spectacular play. Some of our fans and alums down at the sideline, one of the flag thrown, uh, did not get it here, so the red team uh, has the home field advantage uh, perhaps here on the near sideline. Well, we got a flag now. That was a great throw of the flag right there from uh, the sideline almost to midfield. So we'll see. That may uh, give the red team a new set of downs to work with here with 14 seconds to go. Official's going to pick it up here, and it looks like he'll leave the football where it stands. So looks like fourth down is coming up here with 14 seconds to play. Yeah, decided to pick it up right here. So looks like it's going to come down to this. So out of the shotgun set here from the center of the field. They fake the give. Looking to throw here over the top. Left sideline here and hold in. It'll be oh, a first down. No, they're going to call him out of bounds. Oh. Nice completion over there on that far side is the – Catch was made for the red team on the outside by James Gilbert uh, on the throw from Ahern, but uh, apparently the official ruled him out of play, and with six seconds to go, it looks like uh, Coach Anise heading to the center of the field to shake hands with our officiating crew, and the two hmm. teams will come out, and that'll wrap it up here as time is going to run out. The white team will get the win 43-35, to and they'll have the bragging rights uh, at least until fall camp starts. Yeah, another fun Crimson and Gold spring game in the books right here as uh, the white team going to take away a 43-35 to win and uh, a great opportunity for the team to, to come together now and, and to kind of put a bow tie here on this fall campaign, or spring campaign, I should say. I'm looking ahead to the fall campaign uh, and the opportunity now to just kind of step back, take a deep breath uh, for the student athletes to, to wrap up finals and and to, um, you know, for the team, for the coaches, a chance to evaluate this film and uh, in this game and then evaluate the spring overall as you look ahead to the summer and fall. Big thanks to all the fans that came out here to Top Taggart Field today. Reminder of the Bulldogs open up the season August 31st right here in Big Rapids against Mercer. Hurst in the season opener. We'll have uh, complete information online, FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Big thanks to our Ferris State Television digital media production team for making this broadcast possible. Of course, we'll have post-game coverage for you right here as well on Sunny 97.3 and online coverage at FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Great uh, evening here for Ferris State as Coach Denise will gather his team one final time here for the spring and the back-to-back NCAA Division II Football National Champions well prepared here for 2023. Yeah, they are certainly looking good. They have put in some good work and Bulldogs not resting on their laurels, not resting on back-to-back -back national championships, right back to work, right back in the lab getting ready for a lot of teams that are going to be gunning for them. I mean, Mercyhurst is going to come in here uh, ready to uh, try to pull the upset on August the 31st. And so the Bulldogs know they're going to have to be ready to go. And I think they put in a lot of great work here in the spring. And uh, the Bulldogs will kind of go their separate ways here uh, after uh, graduation here. And, uh, you know, certainly in the summer they'll be putting their work in and, and getting ready for that fall camp because they want to be ready to go because they're going to have a – they're going to have a – you know, they have one big target on their back uh, coming into last year. And uh, with back-to-back -back national championships, now they're going to have two big targets on their backs. 43-35 here. The white team defeats the red team for Sandy Golston, Rob Bentley with you again. That'll wrap up the coverage here on Ferris State Television. And on YouTube, we'll have uh, complete post-game coverage for you here on Sunny 97.3. But first, a two-minute timeout. This is Ferris State football right here on the voice of the Bulldogs, Sunny 97.3.